It is a day of goodbye here at Notre Dame for the players. They will say goodbye. You got to cave them in. Last one. Middle match. Next play, give me two. Middle match. Lou, here's something you said a few days ago. Situations change. A variety of things change. What changed? <laughs> let, 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 you, you catch me off guard with that. Oh, I, I think that... Uh, a variety of things change, and I just felt it was the right thing, Bob. I, I wished I could explain and say it was this, it was that. Y you can't. I just felt it was the right thing to do, and that that's all I can tell you, what's inside. When a guy is in a visible position like this one, it's his lifelong dream job. He's been successful at it, and he says, just feels like the right thing to do. I'm stepping aside, but I'm not burned out. I'm not retiring. I hope to coach again, but the rest of it remains unanswered, that the press isn't going to take that for an answer. Well, the press is going to have to take that for an answer from Lou Holtz because that's exactly how I feel. When you told the administration at Notre Dame of your decision to resign, were they surprised? Did they try to talk you out of it? No, they weren't surprised. I, I, I told them this. I think it, it's the right thing to do. And I said, I know you'll find a fine football coach to replace me, and I don't know how long that will take. But I said, I will stay on until you can find an adequate replacement. So if they had said, wait a minute, this comes too suddenly, we're not at all sure that we can get somebody of the caliber that we want and deserve right away, will you coach one more year? You would have coached in 1997 for them? Absolutely, and I told them that. I said I would coach another year, or I would coach until you can find an adequate replacement, period. That's their choice. So that's how I felt. I was not going to leave here hurting the University of Notre Dame by leaving. A lot of people, at least from a distance, are saying to themselves, Nobody makes a move like this. How do you think you'll feel when you walk out onto the field for the last time, the last home game, in this setting and all that it means to so many people? How do you think you'll feel? I will feel very despondent. Uh, I'll feel very alone, and that's a strange feeling to say. But I also will be very proud, but most important of all, I'll be thankful. If you ask for one thing that goes through my mind as I go into that stadium, thank you, God. Thank you, Notre Dame. Thank you for all the people who made this possible. I never dreamed that anything could be as rewarding as what this has been. A new Notre Dame coach has been chosen, and for that story, let's go down to the field in John Docker. John? Charlie, it's Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator here for the Irish for the last three years. We'll take over for Lou Holtz. That'll happen in January after the bowl game. Let me tell you how it happened. Tuesday, the search committee made their decision, but they had to wait until Father Monk Malloy came back from his trip. He's the president of Notre Dame. He gave his approval on Friday. Bob Davey was notified Friday afternoon. So an official announcement will come tomorrow at noon at a press conference, but I can tell you that it is Bob Davey for Lou Holtz beginning in the new year. Charlie? I'm now joined by my broadcast partner, Randy Cross. Randy, what effect will this have on the Irish? Uh, I think all positive, Charlie. It's a seamless choice in Bob Davey, an extremely popular choice, not only within the administration, the athletic department, but more importantly, among the Notre Dame football players. All right, now let's address the game that we have this afternoon. First, Notre Dame. Well, for Notre Dame, the big story, Ron Paulus, their quarterback. He has an opportunity in his remaining year games here at Notre Dame to become the all-time touchdown leader. He also has to make a decision, is he going to come back for that fifth year? Also, running back, Autry Denson, 97 yards to 1,000 yards. Lee Beckham being the last one to do that. A big plateau. Not many have achieved that here at Notre Dame. And the big playmaker from last week, the guy that electrified this crowd on two occasions with his punt returns, Alan Rossum, will get plenty of opportunities today to return those punts. The last time these two teams met, it was 75 years ago, 1921 in the Polo Grounds. First time, of course, they have played here. What about Rutgers? Any chance at all? Uh, Rutgers is America's oldest football program, also steeped in a lot of tradition. Their leader now, Terry Shea, a guy that I think is going to bring winning back to Rutgers football. He's very honest about his football team today. They are undersized, don't have a lot of speed or, si speed or size, but they've got an opportunity today, as far as he's concerned, to have fun and enjoy the Notre Dame experience. And the weather here today at Notre Dame Stadium, in a word, it is cold, but it is football weather. The temperature, 37 degrees, humidity 79%. Forecast cloudy, possibility of a light rain later on this afternoon. 
and the seniors at Notre Dame are now being introduced here to the sellout crowd. And for these young men, this is a moment right here, not the ball game, not the four or five years. This is the moment that they will remember when they gather together as a class here at the stadium at Notre Dame. <laughs> Gathering for the seniors their last time here at Notre Dame and for all of the Fighting Irish their last time in this stadium as they now know it. And here is Lou Holtz with his final appearance. And as they gather together the words victory win Irish and they tell me most important of all this is our house but they await the cue from their leader Lou Holtz. And here is Lou Holtz for the final time in Notre Dame leading the Irish onto the field of battle. South Bend, Notre Dame football on NBC after these messages and a word from your local station. And welcome back to Notre Dame football on NBC. Notre Dame won the toss. They have deferred. So that means that the freshman from Scottsdale Jim Sanson is going to kick it away Rutgers the deep back on the return is number 82 the senior from Atlantic City New Jersey Stephen Harper he is the fastest man on the Rutgers squad. This is a beauty Harper takes it at the two heads to the near side of the 20 has an opening nice move formed under at about the 25 mark it down at the 26 yard line. So we will set the offense with the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Mike Stevens their senior from Morristown New Jersey will lead them in the first three or four series as he comes out and we will check out his offense. Randy here's his offensive line. Pretty undersized group, honestly. Jack McCurin, the senior senior center, easily the best of this group. And their backs and receivers. I say keep an eye not only on Harper, the speedster, but also Chad Bosch, number 25. You gotta love the way this guy runs. He throws his body everywhere. Rutgers opens with three wide receivers, trying to drop it over to Chad Bosch, who you were talking about, the tailback number 25, a bit nervous. And underthrown, it will be second down and 10. Corey Miner had the coverage. Here's the front three for Notre Dame. Uh, a big physical group up front that's going to get an opportunity to dominate the line of scrimmage. Linebackers in secondary for the Irish. Uh, the secondary, I think the corners you can see Covington and Rossum a lot in man on man coverage, a lot of blitzing out of the linebackers. Chad Bosch, Gary Fauntleroy. Are the running backs? Box is going to be dropped for a loss of the 20-yard line. It's going to be third down and 16. Corey Bennett just was there in a hurry to wrap him up. Well, you know, part of dominating is getting the penetration. And Bennett, 95, quick arm over, three, four yards into the backfield. And you know, Bosch, a very fast, aggressive running back. Had absolutely no chance there. And, and any chance that Rutgers does have of getting any offense going has got to be predicated on stopping the penetration. Third down. Play action fake. Incomplete. Andy Holland, the intended receiver. And so for Rutgers, it's going to be three and out. Stevens taking a beating already. Well, he took a shot right, right into the chin right there on that blitz. Took it right up into the chops. Got that from Kenan Tatum, the linebacker, coming on that blitz. So Jared Slovan, the junior from Tucson, will be punting for Rutgers. Alan Rossum is the return man. 
He had two returns for touchdowns last week against Pitt of 55 and 82 yards. A high lazy floater. The coverage is there. Does not have the fair catch. It's down immediately at the 45 yard line. 34 yards on the kick. No return yardage and Ron Paulus. The senior from Berwick Pennsylvania will lead the offense for Notre Dame. And here's that offensive line. And they are the key to, to Lou Ball. And Lou Ball is just coming off and just smashing people. And this is a big fiscal line. Backs and receivers for the Irish. We talked about Autry Denson, 97 yards to get that thousand for the season. Play action fake. Has pressure and a sack. The Rutgers defense strikes. Rusty Swartz, who has drawn the starting assignment, he's a senior from Edison, New Jersey, and therein lies a story. Exactly. Swartz comes from the top of the screen, left side there, just on a blitz. He is a great story. This spring completely blew out his knee, had to have it re reconstructed. They didn't think he'd come back for his fifth year, his fifth senior year, and he's made it all the way back to starting this game against Notre Dame. Second down and 18. What's on the ground? Nothing for Audrey Denson. Rashad Swinger, the best defensive lineman, the senior, is there. Hey, and Swinger, you just, just saw there, he's a 300 pounder, so he is the ballast in the front of this line, along with Swartz. Linebackers in secondary. A little different defense you're going to see. It's a 4 4. Basically, Norris Crawford there. You see the top of the screen, number two, 5'10, 185 pounds. Basically, he is a strong safety. Third down and 17. Paulus to throw. Sets has time to run. Now he goes deep, has a man open, and he misses it. Malcolm Johnson was the intended receiver. And so for the Irish, it is three and out. That's a surprise. And that'll be a lift for Rutgers. Well, no surprise is the protection that Ron Paulus has, and, and also no surprise is a little problem with the footing. So you see, that is he's wide open, the pass is thrown, and it's because of the footing he falls down. And for Terry Shea there in his defense, uh, ideal scenario. They come into a stadium like this, and, and on the first possession, they make Notre Dame punt. So Hunter Smith will be kicking it away. Chad Bosch is the return man. This is a line drive can be returned taken to the 20 yard line. He has five and 10 11 yards on the return. So Rutgers will have the ball following that 43 yard kick and 11 yard return at their own 31 yard line. We are scoreless at Notre Dame Rutgers and Notre Dame. Lou Holtz facing the sideline here at Notre Dame Stadium for the final time. And Rutgers getting a lift from their defense. And they have the ball at their own 31 yard line. They come out throwing and it is intercepted. No, they're going to roll it. Yes, it is an interception. Alan Rossum with the interception for Notre Dame at the 43 yard line. There's Bob Davey, the new head coach, defensive coordinator for the next two and a half, two plus ball games. Well, you know, Stevens comes out and he's doing what Terry Shea wants to do against his defense that's been attacking. Let's go to the short pass. But watch the tip there by Tatum. That sets up the interception by Rossum. Trying to get the short pass to the receiver, but as that ball is tipped and Rossum wisely goes to the ground, making sure he gets that interception. First turnover of the ball game, sliding to the outside. That's a face mask. Audrey Denson pulled down by Rusty Schwartz. And that will cost Rutgers. There is a call, Buddy Ward, the referee. The officials are from the Big East. Personal foul, face mask, 15 yards, automatic first down. Well, defensive coordinator Rod Sharpless and Rutgers made the point that, you know, plays aren't always designed to go outside for this team. They take them outside. And right there you saw Swartz take a little face mask because Denson was heading out into the area where there was absolutely no one else in the Rutgers defense. And with the penalty, the ball on the Rutgers 24-yard line, first down. 
to give us to the first back through that's Jamie Spencer the fullback. Spencer to the 20 yard line he has four. It'll be second down and six. a check of the ticker BYU out in front of Utah. North Carolina leading Duke. Syracuse 17 nothing in front of Temple there in the second quarter there. We are scoreless right now Rutgers and Notre Dame. Second down at the 20 yard line. Ball is goes to an audible as he changes the play and the pitch is to Denson. Denson to the corner and is brought down at the 15 yard line maybe the 14 yard line by Norris Crawford. The senior from Hialeah, Florida. Nice tackle. Well, he's also the recipient, Charlie, of, of overwhelming blocking. Look at Clevenger, 75, get a quick hook. He gets a nice block from his fullback on the kick out. And you saw the overwhelming part. Two or three jerseys from Rutgers rolling on the ground with two or three jerseys of Notre Dame offensive linemen putting him there. And Denson came into this game 97 yards short of that 1,000-yard goal. And Lou will get him 1,000 yards with this bludgeon ball offense. And the change for the measurement, and it is a first down. First down. And there is Autry Denson. He has three straight 100-yard games. You have mentioned the fact that he's 97 yards rushing. He has 10 of them to join. Vegas Ferguson, Alan Pinkett, Reggie Brooks, Al Hunter, and Lee Becton to become only the sixth man in Notre Dame history to rush for more than a thousand yards in a season. Slot on the near side with Bobby Brown in the slot. The fullback, Jamie Spencer. Inside the 10 to the 8, maybe the 7 yard line, where he is stopped by Shin Black. Just good coordination inside. You're going to have block backs. You're going to have traps. And basically, this just sets up, you know, grind and splat offense. Here's the splat. There's the run with the fullback up the middle. And exactly what Lou Holtz wants to do. He wants to be very patient against Sharpless's defense there. You saw the coordinator for Rutgers and, and just use the physical man advantage that the Notre Dame offense has. Eight yard line, second down and four. Paulus, a little play action. Fake has a man wide open at the one yard line. It is Audrey Denson. He goes in scoring his tenth touchdown of the year as he scores from eight yards out, and Notre Dame takes the early lead. Well, take a look at what happens here. On the right side, you'll see receivers clear out. Dot. Autry Denson's lined up in a little wing position. Paulus waits just long enough for him to clear. And that's just good offensive design by Lou Holtz and, and Roberts and the entire staff at Notre Dame. They saw a weakness and they took advantage of it. Kevin McDonald to attempt the point after. And he has it. And Notre Dame moves on top by a score of 7 to nothing with 10 22. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. It was set up by Alan Rossum's interception. 10 minutes, 22 seconds, time remaining in the first quarter. And Notre Dame scores the first touchdown. Well, they did on that drive is they used Autry Denson and the big physical offensive line that they have. They were benefited by that one face mask penalty. But they just ground it out and then did good offensive plan and getting Dawson Denson open in the flat all by himself. Stephen Harper is the deep back and he takes it at the two yard line. Harper's out to the 10, 20. Nice outside move, 25. And then he is swarmed at the 26 yard line. And there's a flag. It's going to be a late hit called against Notre Dame. 24 yards on the return. They will tack the penalty onto the end of the run. Are they saving offsetting penalties? I'm not quite sure what the offset would be. Stephen Harper was alone. Dead ball, personal foul, a late hit by the return team, half the distance to the goal, first down. Oh, I would love to see a replay of that. Well, so would so Terry <laughs> Shea, no doubt. Here comes Whoa. Harper, and here comes a whole bunch of company. Out of bounds. Wow. There comes everybody else. Thump. There's one late. There's two late. 
That's a good call right there. We were blocked off by that Notre Dame bench from up here, but uh, that is one thing this offense does not need because when you back up like this, you were just begging a defense to go into full on attack mode. To Rutgers now from their own 13 yard line. Here's a spin and a handoff inside. And that is Gary Fauntleroy, the sophomore at 245 pounds. A straight shot up the middle for 15 yards. And, and he has the first down as we go down to John Dockery. Doc. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Skip Bowles, um, lots of changes here. Did you have an inkling that this was coming that your dad might be leaving? You know, every year you know it was going to happen one of these years. I mean, he can't be here forever, and you know, it's not a thing that it has something has led up to it. About three weeks ago, I think he really started feeling like this was the right thing for him to do at the time, and so he, I think he made his decision a couple weeks ago and sat on it for a week, and and I think he's really comfortable with it. Father Roy, to the a short line, game by Rutgers there. Um, are you surprised that he actually did it? I mean, I know it comes up every year and he thinks about it. What precipitated it? I mean, I, I can't answer that. I think he's the only one that can answer that on why he's made the decision. But to him, and like I said before, the only thing I've asked him is, do you feel comfortable with your decision? He said, I feel like it's the right thing to do. I said, then, you know, as a family, we support it a thousand percent. I haven't climbed into every detail, nook, cranny, tried to analyze it, oversee it, or anything else. I think, no, and it's not a sad time. It, it's not a sad time. This is a time for us to celebrate 11 great years at the University of Notre Dame as a head football coach, 11 great years in South Bend for our family. This is, this is, a time to celebrate for us. What's it like for you and the family? Obviously a big change after 11 years and 11 good years. Um, what's it been like for you? Uh, uh, emotional. I mean, I think it's more emotional for our family as it gets closer and closer and closer. But you know, at the same time, I think it'll bring us together. We're all here up here this weekend. We've spent an awful lot of time together. My son was baptized yesterday. And just the atmosphere and just bringing everybody together, I think it's really been nice. And I think it's been comforting to him to have the entire family here because that's the most important thing. Is it true that he's going to be an assistant coach on your staff at Connecticut next year? <laughs> if he stays unemployed, I'll take him. <laughs> Do you think he will be in football in the future? I don't know. I think he'll probably sit down for about three weeks, about three to four weeks from now. I think he'll sit down and probably analyze and evaluate where he is. Thank you, Skip. Thank you for having Charlie. me. Charlie. The reason for the, the, uh, the long interview, the time that we had it, as you saw, Ben French uh, was the injured player for Rutgers. He was taken to the far side. Chad Bosch carrying on the last play just across the 35 yard line. So it'll be third down and two. Hey, you know, Terry Shea's offense is doing right here. Is they're taking advantage of what they have as a positive, and that's uh, that's using some quickness. They are not very big, so what they've done is they've moved the ball right now with some quick traps and some slow delays, and they're trying to get Notre Dame off balance and out of position. Fauntleroy, the fullback, Bosch is the tailback, and he's going to pick up the first down as he goes to the 39 yard line he needed two and he got four second first down in this drive for Rutgers Burt Berry is the man who stopped him and here's a look at Chad Bosch he is also a senior well he's got that head divot thing going right now with his little uh, forehead dive he did on that last tackle he's getting dirt in his eyes but watch this kid this kid is not very big Bosch is about 175 pounds but don't be surprised if you see him run inside and actually go find a linebacker to hit. Well, he's 5'9". He can kind of hide from the, from the defense. Here's a little punch pass over to the left flat to Chad Bosch. Meanwhile, Stevens is taking a beating, but he gets it away. And Rutgers is on the move. 50 yard line. Well, they tried this play earlier and Stevens didn't get the ball to Bosch. But on that last play, they, they get him off into the left flat and it just works to perfection. Just keep doing that. Terry Shea knows full well. You got to dump the ball to the backs and you've got to hit your receivers on the quick slant plays before you even think about going deep. Just a yard, maybe two for Bosch, and that is all on this play. It was a first down at the 50 yard line and Corey Bennett is credit for the tackle for Notre Dame. Well you see Bosch with that divot on his helmet still sitting there and look at him weaving. Not always a good sign for a running back in any offense when you see that bobbing and weaving and moving and he's about two three yards deep in his backfield. Second down and nine. Check of the clock. Seven and a half minutes. We're at the midway point in the first quarter. Notre Dame is up by a score of seven to nothing. Two tight ends on the set by Rutgers. They show motion. Pretty good protection. Time to throw underneath the coverage. Should have been caught. Stephen Harper. Tear him off of his shoulder pad. I think he 
turned and started to turn up field before he had the ball. Well, you know, in this West Coast style offense, you're going to see receivers do things you see a lot on Sundays in these pro offenses. And, you know, sort of like a la Jerry Rice of the Niners, you see Harper drag all the way across for that short one that the offense is designed to get the short one to turn it into a long one. And Jerry Rice is. Stephen Harper's favorite player in professional football. He grew up a 49er fan. Not kind of a stretch for a Jersey guy, but you know, he grew up a 49er fan. Four wide receivers, there's pressure in the sound. Rather than taking the coverage downfield, Notre Dame just sent everybody. Well, exactly what didn't happen the play before, which was him getting a lot of time. Stevens does not have the time. Looks like a little confusion. You've got Tatum coming up the middle, almost clean. And then edges. You can't afford to have edges when you don't have the physical advantage. You can't get an edge on a linebacker like Tatum. You can't get an edge on Dansby and Maiden, those guys up front. You got to get split down the middle, right in their grill. Alan Rossum is the return man. Here's pressure in his block. And then picked up Notre Dame is going to score. Coretta blocked it. And Joy Goodspeed picked it up and scored the touchdown. Kevin Coretta, the senior from Fort Wayne, with the block. And there is not a more loved player on this Notre Dame football team this year than number 40, Kevin Coretta. They are nuts about the enthusiasm this guy brings to the football team. What a way to cap off the last game you're going to play here at Notre Dame Stadium. And what a way to go out or what a way to feel right now for the young man getting himself a touchdown. And for Joy Goodspeed, the freshman from Montgomery, Illinois, that is his second touchdown that he has scored this year. McDonald to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Hunter Smith, and it is good. So Notre Dame goes up 14 to nothing over Rutgers and the reaction of Lou Holtz. Today, head coach at Notre Dame. 6:33 and Notre Dame up 14 and nothing. Here's Joey Goodspeed who picked it up and headed for the end zone after the block punt by Kevin Coretta. Jim Sanson now will kick off and Stephen Harper is the deep back on the return. There's an area where Harper is standing as you can see it has been spray painted over today because people came into the stadium overnight and they had a statement that drew a big heart with their name big heart love Lou and that was there early this morning when everybody showed up but immediately came out and spray painted over it. High and short far side. That's Melvin Cobbs Cobbs on the return to the 32 of the 33 yard line. 11 yards on the return and here is the block and the return for the touchdown. Well look at the unique formation with these three fullbacks job is get a guy here get a guy here get a guy here but watch what happens when the fullback in the middle and the fullback on the right make a choice on the same guy that frees Coretta right up the middle. Coretta just happens to get a piece of his hand on that thing and that sets up a 35 yard touchdown the other way for good speed. That is the first block punt return for a touchdown since 1991 against Pitt. Little play action fake, good production deep over the middle and misses it. Had a man open. It was Jason Curry, the senior from Montclair, New Jersey, the tight end. Deke Cooper had the coverage, and that's the man they want to pick on because he is a freshman free safety. And the reason you do that really is play action. So much a big part of this, this style of offense is using the play action and trying to influence specifically the free safety. Terry Shea said one of the first things he learned from Bill Walsh in this offense was if you looked at the free safety as soon as you turned on that tape and saw what you could do to him and how you could influence him with the play action. Second down and 10. Here's the draw. Good move by Barton Roy. Maybe for a yard. That's going to be about it. Kevin Tatum with the tackle. Be sure to stay with us at the end of the ball game today because Lou Holtz after the game is over and we are going to stay right here with our continuing coverage after the game is over here at Notre Dame Stadium. He is going to address the student body and the fans who are here. And of course it's another sellout crowd at Notre Dame Stadium. That's as soon as the game is over an added tradition on this of course the final game here at Notre Dame Stadium as we now know. It. Three wide receiver slot right. 
pass is low and it's going to be incomplete. Andy Holland the intended receiver Benny Gilbo was there immediately for Notre Dame. Well it'll be fourth down three and out. Try that's just a sign right there uh, of impatience and pressure and pressure causes impatience in quarterbacks and I'll tell you one thing else that is a cause and effect uh, sometimes when you punt the ball to Alan Rossum uh, you don't see the ball again until he's holding it up in the air in the end zone these punt returns. And guess what you're going to put it to Alan Rossum. Yeah these punt returns. <laughs> Are unbelievable and it has this crowd just on the edge of their seats. Pretty good kick. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 32 yard line. 35 yards on the kick. Here's, uh, on the kick program note Sunday on Meet the Press, Espionage is in the news again. How can we protect America against the spy games? We'll ask National Security Advisor Tony Lake and Senator Sam Nunn. That's Sunday on Meet the Press. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Notre Dame from their own 32 yard line out in front 14 another. Ball is turns he moves Denson over to the flank. Ball is to throw. Fires it fires a high but pull down nice grab by Emmett Mosley. Charlie, the exact same formation you saw Notre Dame score on that last play, where they ran Denson off into the off into the flat. He was wide open. Well, they saw the formation. They covered the flat. What they didn't cover was the little curl right there. The curl to Mosley was wide open. Gain of 14 yards on the play. Remember 94 in the Navy game, Emmett Mosley scoring four touchdowns. He rushed for 84 yards. He got passes for 37. He had six punt returns and a kickoff return. He did a little bit of everything in that ball game. Here's the option. Wallace with the option and the pitch. Outside is Dixon down the sideline. The 30, 25, 20, and then pushed out of bounds. Shin Black for Rutgers pushed him out. This is the offense that Lou Holtz loves. 37 yards on the option. Well, you almost need a, a little version of Frank Sinatra in my way when you watch the option being run here by Ron Paulus because Lou Holtz in his last home game here at Notre Dame is going to do things his way. His way is a big physical offensive line and his way is the option. He's got a passing quarterback in Paulus who spent a lot of time running the option. 17 yard line first down Paulus to throw sets. Fires and not great. Good defensive play. Good defensive play by Cameron Chadwick, the senior from Union, New Jersey. Mostly the intended receiver. It'll be second and 10 at the 17. Well, it's just textbook, Charlie. You're going to get in these situations where if you're going to blitz and you're going to attack, you're going to be manned up on the outside against the receivers, and you better be able to do this. And, and what Chadwick does is just what they teach on any level of football as he kept himself between the quarterback and the receiver. Wallace, two of four, 22 yards, and the touchdown. That was to Denson, and here is Denson on the handoff. Inside the 15 and down at the 13-yard line, tripped up by Aaron Brady. He's got a long way to go to reach that 1,000-yard mark, and he's 97 today. No, he's picked up more yardage on that end around. He has a total of 51 at 37 yards, a big chunk. So now he needs only 47 to become the sixth man in Notre Dame history to reach the thousand yard mark. Well, well he's got a little chunk of the, the, the turf on his helmet kind of like Bosch did for Rutgers. His halfbacks are landing face first. Third down and six. Wallace a little shovel pass underneath to Jamie Spencer and Spencer will score. His fifth touchdown of the year from 13 yards out. Well, right now, offensively, Charlie, this is exactly like you run it in practice. When you draw it on the chalkboard, you say, we want guys to come up, and we want to get our, our halfback or our fullback into an open area just to run against air. And that's exactly what he had around him right there was lots and lots of air. And Jamie Spencer was in on a walk. Sansom will attempt the extra point. And he hooks it, but it's good. So Notre Dame now leads 21 to nothing. And we still have four minutes and seven seconds to go in the first. It's 40. 
Needs two more to become the all-time leader. One to top. Here's Melvin Cobbs on the high short kickoff on the wing, and he returns it to the 27-yard line. Face mask, and a flag comes flying in after 12 yards on the return. Melvin Cobbs, a sophomore from North Braddock, Pennsylvania. And so Notre Dame is kicking away from Stephen Harper. And as we suggested, we'll mention it again, it's, an, it's a face mask on the call. Incidental face mask, five yards, first down. <laughs> Incidental's kind of like that. <laughs> Incidental face mask happens to everybody but you. It's a very, a very significant Whoa. face mask. And Whoa, the, yeah. you know what's a dead giveaway there is the spinner. I mean, obviously, I don't mean to make light of a, a dangerous situation when the guy gets his face mask pulled like that but, you know even Terry shake it appreciate from the sideline and even from up here you see those guys spinning like that you know the good Lord doesn't make you anybody to be able to run in circles like that only those little dolls at the car that the head bounces and turns on and the give to the second back through that's little Chad Bosch and he's doing exactly what we talked about, Charlie. You know, don't be surprised if this guy goes in there and, and tries to hunt himself up a linebacker to hit. And on that case right there, he found himself Laurent Cobbins, which uh, I'd go to plan B. And Bosch it, is 5'9", 175. Cobbins is 6 feet even, 246. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> and that would be the reason for plan B. Yes. You know, plan B would be hoping that the next guy's maybe only 225 or 230 because Cobbins will bring a day's load into your face if you're going to try to lay run into him. Second down and six. He brings in Andy Holland as a tight end. Once more protection and may have run out of time. Delay on the offense, five yards. Hey, Terry Shea knows that indecision really does kill a, a young quarterback, or not a young quarterback, but an inexperienced quarterback like Stevens. Uh, he came into this season basically with a, a red shirt sophomore in Ralph Sack of the backup number eight who had played, you know, sparingly. And a guy basically in Stevens who was a, you know, a star third baseman on the Rutgers baseball team didn't have spring practice, didn't have the, the value of being able to see this offense up close. So, you know, with Saka and Stevens, there's very, very little experience, even given the games they've played this year. You don't learn this offense in seven, eight, nine weeks. This is Rutgers fourth opportunity in offense here in the first quarter. They had one pretty good drive and that really was it. The rest of the time they've been shut down just as Chad Bosch was shut down here by Delvin Dansby the senior from Birmingham. Well watch what Melvin Dansby number 51 does right here just a quick arm over just you're getting a combination right now if you're an offensive lineman for Rutgers not only are these guys big for Notre Dame up front and bigger than probably anybody you've played against except for maybe some of the West Virginia and Syracuse guys you're getting guys that aren't there when you go to hit them. They're as quick as the guys you play that are smaller. Third down and 10, three wide receivers. Here's pressure and a sack at the 25-yard line. Stepped away from pressure from the front. Stevenson was caught from behind by Ronaldo in. They will lose seven yards on the play. Hey, this is a this is a stunt blitz, but you got to call this a vice. It looks like a vice when the quarterback takes the ball in his hands like that. And to a quarterback, this looks like a vice because that so-called pocket all of a sudden gets uh, gets to look like an envelope because it's closing around you new series on NBC South Bend Vice slow man to punt here's pressure again gets a good kick away Audrey Denson is this return he backpedals him 15 yards excellent kick it'll be down to around the 25 yard line Jared Slovan the junior punter from Tucson Arizona 49 yards on the kick we have 141. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. And Notre Dame is up 21 to nothing. And the Irish have the ball at the 25. Hey, well, Stevens is waggling the arm back and forth, trying to give the hand signals there to his wide receivers. Because when he sees those blitzes and he sees those things, part of that offense, that West Coast deal, is you got to teach your receivers when to break their routes off. Robert Farmer is now the tailback for Notre Dame. He makes his first appearance in the ball game. Pump fake wants to go deep, has a man all alone, it's Mosley. Emmett has it down the sideline, and it's another touchdown for Notre Dame. That's 75 yards as Ron Paws has thrown his third touchdown pass of the game. 
He is now tied at 41 with Rick Meyer. You got a flag down on the field, Charlie, about the 11 yard line. They're going to bring it back. You're right. It'll be a clipping call against Notre Dame. Blocking in the back. And there was no need for it. Mosley was out in front of everybody. Hey, you remember that smile and the little uh, bounce in his step you saw from Lou after that last touchdown? Well, the smile and the bounce is gone because of this. It's in the back. It's unnecessary. Malcolm Johnson. You, you, you can't really say the intent is not good. The intent is to help. It's the execution that left a lot to be desired there. It'll be a first down at the Rutgers 21 yard line. But you notice a short drop by Paulus on that last play. That was not a seven step classic, and he had all kinds of time to sit back there, pump a couple times, and find Mosley well down the field by himself. Mosley comes across in motion. Paulus to throw, sets up deep. This is a screen. Jamie Spencer behind the screen. Only going to work for about a yard. That's going to be it. Norris Crawford, Roger Wingate were there for Rutgers. Well, you know what you got to concentrate here on is the defensive line. Watch how freely they come into the backfield. These Rutgers defensive linemen had to be told this week, guys, this is a good offensive line. If you notice you're getting into the backfield too easy, it's a screen. Run to the flat and make the tackle. That's exactly what they did defensively. Take a look there at the Rutgers defensive line coach Steckel, and I mean. That was execution and well ex well executed by the Rutgers defensive line. Second and nine. Jamie Spencer, who scored a touchdown in the ball game, he is stopped by the linebacker, Aaron Brady, the sophomore from Hanover, Pennsylvania. And we're going to take a countdown here to the end of the first quarter. First period dominated as expected by Notre Dame. They are up three touchdowns. And three extra points over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And they are threatening here again in the waning seconds of the first period. Ron Paulus is trying to hurry up, get this last play in. He's got 10 seconds, so he's got plenty of time. Four wide receivers. On third down. Little play action fake, quick outside to Denson. And Denson is out of bounds. Between the six and the seven yard line. And with that play, time has expired in the first quarter. Notre Dame is up 21 to nothing. We'll return to South Bend after these messages and a word from your local station. Along with Lou Holtz in his final game, John Dockery on the sideline, Randy Cross, I'm Charlie Jones. First down goal to go at the Rutgers seven yard line. You almost figure that Notre Dame will call us to throw it into the end zone. You'll have at least three opportunities here. And he's going to throw. He sets. Rutgers say that they have the ball. Do the officials agree they do? So Rutgers takes over on the bubble of Ron Wallace. Charles Woolridge is there. Well, you remember how alone Ron Wallace was earlier on that one play on a very short drop. Well, he wasn't all alone there. Good coverage down the field in the end zone and. Rutgers manages to strip this ball away from Paulus. It came with the same formation with Denson in that little wing area. And Rutgers has adjusted extremely well. You shot her shot swing or get that ball away from behind. And the ball comes out and, and is laying down on the ground. I mean, that was just an easy recovery there for Brian Yeager. First down, seven yard line. At six feet and 245 pounds, rushing for only 126 yards this season prior to this game, getting the call. Well, the best is yet to come for this young man here. I mean, this is a guy in this offense that you're going to see if you follow Rutgers football. You're, you're going to see him in the next couple of years featured not only as a running back, but as a receiver out of the backfield. And he's a guy that Terry Shea likes a lot. He eased him into the offense. He's played more and more as the years go on. Gain of five, second down and five. Bosch 
finishes the tailback. Marsh gets the draw. A couple of yards to the 14 yard line. It'll be third down and six. As Alton Maiden, the senior from Dallas, makes the tackle for Notre Dame. You know, this Notre Dame defense is very sure tacklers. And watch what happens. There's a hole here. You've got an opportunity, but you got Laron Cobbins coming from that backside. And when he gets in there against a guy the size of a Bosch, you know, Bob Davies there, the, the next head coach at Notre Dame, now the defensive coordinator, knows darn well that he's getting to a guy like Cobbins unblocked. 99.9% .9 of the time, he's going to bring that half back down. And Rutgers takes a timeout. They were running out of time on the play clock. They stop it. Time, time out. Notre Dame leads 21 nothing. Rutgers has the ball. Third down and three on their own 14 yard line. They have not been able to generate any kind of offense with the exception of one drive. They picked up about 35 to 40 yards, and that's really been it. Here's the option. And a couple of pump fakes and swarmed under the 10 yard line is Mike Stevens. Corey Miner was the first man to get to him for Notre Dame, and you have the feeling that panic sets into the Rutgers offense. Well, you know, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, so it, it's time for company and family. Well, I don't know if Stevens has any family here, but he definitely has company in the backfield. Every time he goes back to pass, Bob Davey and this defense are figuring out another way to confuse the blocking front of Rutgers. And once again, guess what, Joe? Alan Rossum. Mr. Rossum. Watch the punt return. More importantly, before the punt return, watch those three men up in front of the punt. Slow round to kick. Notre Dame has a return on sending only one man as pressure. Rossum takes it at the 44 yard line in Notre Dame territory. He's going to return to the Rutgers 40 and then lean to the 39, and that's going to be it. 46 yards on the kick, 15 yard return. Let's go down to John Dockery. Thank you, Charlie. Mark Edwards, um, beginning of the year, did you have any inclination or indication that Loom may be leaving? Um, I, I had my own you know, thoughts and uh, about what was going on. Um, I, th I thought it possibly this was his last year, but I, I really didn't know for sure. Uh, I just wish him the best and uh, I hope everything works out. Did you have any, was it the expectations of having possibly a national championship year and that not happening? Do you think that affected things? Um, I, I don't necessarily think that uh, that affected anything. Uh, I mean, I, I think it would have happened regardless. So, uh, I mean, we're just going to you know, wish him the best, see what happens. All right. Thank you, Mark. And good luck. I know you'll be coming back from an injury. Will you be back for the bowl game? Um, we're, we're not still, we're not sure right now. Uh, you know, we're going to start rehabbing and see what happens. And uh, hopefully I'll be back. But uh, you know, if not, I'll be there rooting for my teammates. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Charlie? Jogging, of course, with Mark Edwards. Edwards with a total of 10 touchdowns on the season. The fullback, eight rushing and two receiving. A great loss for Notre Dame, but they just seem to pick it up and keep on going. This time, they had a flag, and rather than picking up the yardage, they are penalized back to the Rutgers 47 yard line. Hey, Charlie, M Mark Edwards is my favorite player for this Notre Dame team the last few years. I mean, he just is an old fashioned kind of a football player. Not only has he got the old fashioned kind of haircut, but He's a guy that plays fullback, runs over people, gets dirty, carries the ball. He's also a class young man and a Notre Dame football player I think has a future on the next level. And we have flags flying on the far side. Ron Paulus goes over to check it out with the officials. And here's the call. Procedure call against Notre Dame. Rebel nil eagle formation. Man lined up, offensive man lined up in the neutral zone. First down. Interesting. There was no snap. But, but that's very illegal. Yes. You know, one thing would be interesting too, Charlie, we're talking about the seniors last day in the stadium and Lou. And I'm looking forward to the Lou's speech to the student body. They've got this thing wired up here so Lou can speak to them after the game. I don't think it'll be a driver on the house or on the team. Wallace fires across and he misses. He goes to Rakai Nelson, the freshman, and it is incomplete. So stay with us after the ball game, through the ball game, and afterwards to hear what he has to say. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, there's traditions here. You know, people think the pep rally on Friday nights has always been huge. You know, they used to have the pep rally in a lot smaller area with about 200, 300 people. You know, now it's thousands. They used to have the luncheon. 
on Fridays for 50, 60, maybe 100 people. Now it's for thousands. I mean, who holds has brought that enthusiasm back to Notre Dame football? Rakai Nelson goes high and pulls it down. The reception at the 30-yard line, a gain of 22 yards on the play. And a good illustration, Charlie, of the kind of arm that Ron Paulus has. And honestly, featured in a pro-style throwing offense, you'll see an awful lot more of that out of Ron Paulus if indeed he does come back next year for that fifth year. I think it'd be the best thing this young man could do from his football career standpoint to come back here and do a little graduate studying for his fifth year at Notre Dame. When we talked to him in the past, he said that's something that he and his, he's going to sit down with his mom and dad and discuss it after the season is over, depending on who the new coach is. Well, now he knows. But it's a defensive coach that I can figure out the type of offense that he's going to run. I mean, it is a pro-style uh, pro offense. I agree with you. I think it'd be very advantageous for him. He's a neat young man. And this offense that he has been running here simply has not suited him at all. But he said the balance, Notre Dame, the experience way out, way outweighs the fact that he's been running an offense that he's not geared for, for a down course but, to go but, for. But it's set up. You talk about an offense that's suited. Yeah. But it might not be suited for Ron Paul's style. But this offensive line and this offense with a fullback short like this is suited for a short, fourth and short. Joey Goodspeed is the fullback. Three. It's going to be close. I don't think so. They're going to mark it at the 30-yard line. And he needed to get almost to the 29. Not quite, but almost to the 29. You know, obviously, Charlie, they're down 21 nothing. But from Rutgers' standpoint, defensively, they are doing things like you draw it up. Terry Shea is behind, way behind. He's got plenty of positive things to reinforce with his players. Mike Stevens struggling, one of seven. He has been replaced by Ralph Saka, not because of the numbers. This is part of the plan. Yeah, every three series or so, they're going to change quarterback. Here's the pitch to Jackie Cross, the freshman tailback. Well, the last play, the quarterback had a lot of company, and Crooks has plenty of company there. And, you know, Terry Shea is going deep into his sideline chart of this, you know, his West Coast style offense. And no mystery as to who he's the most influenced by. There's a shot of the 92 Stanford Cardinal football staff. And Bill Walsh, a gentleman I spent 10 years of my career in this style of an offense with. And Terry Shea went from the head coaching job at San Jose State and took the offensive coordinator's job at Stanford under Bill Walsh. Kind of an unusual move. But, uh, that tutelage, I think, has done wonders and will be a great plus for Terry Shea in the future. Bill Walsh is uh, very high on Terry Shea. Here's the, the total offense. Notre Dame 190 yards. Rutgers has 25 in total offense. Well, right now, you, you saw Terry Shea looking at that chart. Now, offensively, it looks like Notre Dame probably has 13 guys on defense, and it doesn't look fair on that chart. Second down, 11. Sack of the quarter, and we've got whistle. Got a little motion on the tight end, came out of his stance, got down into the three-point stance, and abruptly left it. And that'll be a hanky. Dead ball, false start, movement prior to the snap on the offense, five yards, second down. See Ron Keller right there in the end. I, I love it. I used to do it, too. I mean, notice how the players freeze. I mean, the, the, the frame froze because that was frozen. But, I mean, before it went, I mean, he gets that hit off the ground. It's kind of like, uh, looks like a spotlit deer. I mean, just, whoa. Maybe they don't notice me. <laughs> if I stop, that hole very still. Second down and 16. Zaka, pressure from the back side, and he's up. They say going to blow it dead back to the 14-yard line. He, of course, uh, Saka, that is. Number eight is the younger brother of Tony, the quarterback formerly of Penn State, and John at Eastern Kentucky. Ron Cobbins made the play for Notre Dame. Well, he watched his counterpart, Stevens, take a few hits and have lots of a company. And uh, LaRon Cobbins has sort of been leading the company charge so far today defensively, not only making the tackles on the running plays, but they're blitzing a lot with Tatum and he inside against these quarterbacks and, and I keep bringing them because right now offensively the guys up front are not figuring out a way to, to get those blitzes from the inside linebacker. Third down 25 Notre Dame has four sacks in the ball game with nine and a half minutes time remaining in the first half. 
Pretty good protection going deep down the sideline into double coverage. Almost intercepted. In reality, Ivory Covington should have made the interception, but he didn't pull it in. Well, he, he'd had a heck of a chance, a heck of a time pulling that one in inbounds. I think that's what entered his mind more often than not is where on the field he was trying to bring that thing in. But uh, you saw that was a ball just basically put up by Sack because the coverage was his own coverage and you weren't getting behind that one. Slow man to punt. He's had one block that cost him a touchdown. Russell is the return man. He's at the Notre Dame 45 yard line. No pressure. Ooh, good kick. Take it to 40 yard line and down at the 41. Just slipping. The turf's a little loose. Down the middle of the field between the hash marks, we're going to step aside. Notre Dame leads Rutgers 21 to nothing. This is Charlie Jones, Randy Cross, John Dockery, Notre Dame Stadium, 9-16, time remaining in the first half. Andre Denson, he's 44 yards rushing. He has 53 in the ball game to reach the 1,000-yard plateau. He becomes the sixth Notre Dame player in history. And he shortens the odds right here. Denson around the right side for about 15 yards on the play. Art Dreyer makes the tackle. He's trying to become the sixth man, only the sixth man, but he's shaken up here in Notre Dame history to join these five. Bacon has done it three times, Ferguson twice. But that, that absolutely amazes me. You think of all the great names and, and the tradition and the legend of the Notre Dame football legacy, and we tend to associate a thousand yards like it's done on such a regular basis. You have that short a list at a school that's been playing football at such a high caliber for so long, just absolutely just Ogled me the first time I, saw it. I just couldn't believe it. Still needing 31 yards as he comes out for a breather. You see how badly he was shaken up on the play. Here's Robert Farmer. You know, a lot of what's happening too on, on this field, Charlie, is you're seeing guys slip down and that's what got Denson see him. He's trying to put a little wiggle. He's, he's wiggling on air, but you saw that left foot come out, and he kind of landed on the ball. And, and that can be a problem a lot of times for a running back, but now he needs 31 yards to get to that 1,000 yards. And Though the obvious thing right here is his physical well-being, not so much the record or the 1,000-yard barrier. Second down and three. Three. Wallace, little play action. Spencer sets, stands in, has a man, and it is incomplete. Black is going to be dropped. Jamie Spencer, the intended receiver, pass interference. He's going to be called on Roger Wingate. Interference called against Rutgers. Joe will spot the ball down about the 12 yard line. You know, Yopalis came in here and just throws the ball, Good. and Wingate never turns, first down. runs right into the receiver. Uh, clearly an interference, but then again, not a chance really for a legitimate shot at, at a completion, so an unnecessary interference to compound it for Rutgers. And, of course, in college football, let me correct myself, the yardage penalty takes it to the 23-yard line and not the spot of the foul. Remember now, Ron Paulus, 40 touchdowns. And his Notre Dame career. Trying to get just one more to tie. Admire the all-time Notre Dame record. And two, of course, would break it. Ken Berry, the junior from Berkeley, Missouri. Carrying and Charles Wildridge, the senior from Riverdale, Maryland, making the tackle for Rutgers. There's Ron Wallace. Hey, that's what he's after. Hey, you talk about names, you talk about the halfbacks. There's some great names that have played the quarterback position here at Notre Dame. Joe Theismann, Rick Meyer. Obviously, from those stats, though, traditionally a hard running football team. Ken Berry, the tailback. A little play action fake. Wallace, a pump fake, buying some time. Goes back underneath the coverage. He goes to. His tight end, Pete Kriplevich. And he is up in it at the 17-yard line by Gil Ross. Well, that's almost the definition of a safety foul there because Kriplevich is, is basically in that play in as a third tackle to guard against that outside blitz that Notre Dame was getting early. And when 
Paulus gets that pressure, he just knows to peel off and be there in the flat for his quarterback. Meanwhile, Paulus, an excellent afternoon, 8 of 12, already 137 yards, and as previously mentioned, has thrown for two touchdowns. Would like to get two more to set the record. And he'd like to set it at home. Far side, Ken Berry has the corner inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Nice move. Sean Devlin, the senior from the New Jersey, makes the tackle. This might be Lou's last game here at Notre Dame Stadium, but uh, he is not exactly frolicking along the sidelines, enjoying lovingly the experience because he is obviously well into this. Some things never change, and that's Lou Holtz on the sideline of the football game. And you know what? He'll look just like that wherever it is he ends up coaching next. Because believe me, he will be coaching next. He is a football player. Nine yard line, first down, goal to go. Here's the pick. It's Robin Farmer. Touchdown called against Notre Dame. So the touchdown still stands. 27 to nothing with the extra point to come. Farmer scoring from nine yards out. A dead ball, personal foul on the offense after the score would have a touchdown. And penalized on the kickoff. Wallace working on his option move at the bench and discussing it with his offensive partners. Sansom to attempt the extra point, a low snap, nicely handled. And it is good. Hunter Smith handling the snap, the extra point is good, and Notre Dame up 28 nothing. The changing of the guard, Lou Holtz, and now Bob Davey will be the new head coach here at Notre Dame. Randy, we had a chance to visit with him yesterday. This was before even he knew, and uh, he was very guarded, but very nice. But there was nothing that really that he could say. Well, he's had a pretty good idea, I think, for the last week or so since this whole process started. And, you know, I think he's to be highly commended with the class with which he handled this yes. whole thing. I mean, he basically right. said when asked about this this week, he goes, hey, look, this football team has enough distractions yes. with what's going on. I am not going to add myself to the distraction the list. And, uh, you know, that, as I think, it tells you some of the character of the gentleman they've hired as an expert. And the word got out yesterday. He didn't even go to the uh, to the pep rally last night. He did not want to be a distraction to Lou Holmes and to the people that were there to honor him. And there he is again. That is Bob Davey, defensive coordinator. Now, the question is, what kind of an offense is he going to run? Well, and most defensive coordinators will tell you, I'll run the offense that always beat me. Well, exactly. I would anticipate a more wide open style of an offense here under Bob Davey. Um, these football players here at Notre Dame, when Lou Holtz last year had that neck surgery mm -hmm. and was in the press box for a while, you saw a little inkling. Yeah of what Bob Davey likes to do offensively, and it entails a little bit more of the ball being in the air. Rutgers at their own 43, three wide receivers showing motion. Zach is scrambling. Heads for the corner, needs a block. Doesn't get anything. Leads at the 45-yard line. Well, he needs a block, Charlie, but what he gets is the same uh, thing that basically Stevens got. He got a lot of company. Vinny Gilbo leading the defense for Notre Dame. And the company is not coming over for Thanksgiving dinner. There's no stuffing involved of the edible variety. The stuffing is being done on the quarterbacks for Rutgers. Was Andre Denson getting a little massage uh, on the sideline? Because the defense has been massaging the quarterbacks of Rutgers. Well, they definitely have. And, you know, saw Stevens there, and he's been getting hit. Andre Denson, you saw him slip, and you saw him go down. And 
Yeah, there's a lot of explanation on why things happen. What's that tell you? Three wide receivers. Here's a drop on the road. 0.7 yards. Oh, boy. 0.7 yards. Average yardage per play. 7 yards. I, I would cipher that down at about two feet of play right now. Five. That's right. And, you know, against oh, this type of a physical defense that I think has the, the ability, especially on the outsides with Rossum and Covington, to man up and take those wide receivers away, it really illustrates the needs of a team like Rutgers. They need a tight end. They need a pass receiver right back. Good news on Andre Denson. It's the next stinger. He will be coming back. And here's the option down the line. Going to be good for a yard, and that's going to be off. Lamont Bryant, linebacker. Georgetown, South Carolina, is there to stop Ralph Sacco. Fourth down and two. And Rutgers will kick it away. With the Scarlet Knights, three and out on their last five possessions. Here's the Notre Dame defense has taken control of the ball game. Alan Rossum is the return man. Jared Slovan is the kicker. Four minutes, time remaining. It's two one of the inbounds. On the fake, it is the first down. And did you notice what the putter did? And that is Slovan. He fell down behind the three men that are up. And what that does is he cuts off the vision of the defense. They're not sure what you're going to do. They go with the fake. Marcus Luna, the tight end, who is one of the up backs to block, takes a direct snap and picks up the first down. Well, he's also got Springer in front of him, 99, as a blocker. And that's a nice call by Mike Gibson, the special teams coordinator for Rutgers. I mean, he basically said there was nothing we won't do. We do have specials, which is a coaching coaching cliche for fakes and passes and stuff. And stuff. Intercepted. Benny Gilbert has the interception down the sideline. Gilbert picks up his third interception of the season. Saves the touchdown, 37 yards on the return. Oh, Terry Shea going, look, going, getting a little greedy on that one play. Said, hey, look, I got that play on fourth down. Let me go for something down the field. Let me see what I can do. Can I stick one into my tight end? Well, you can try, but Benny Gilbo right there on the man coverage. Not enough lead on that play, pass. And a play like that also shows you what kind of a speed differential there is between the Irish defensive backfield and the receivers and running backs of Rutgers. Notre Dame at the Rutgers 33-yard line, 327 time remaining first half. A little inside-out move by Robert Farmer, and then he's knocked out inside the 30-yard line. Yeah, well, we've been telling you about records that are being trying to attain, whether it's Ron Paulus for touchdowns, whether it's it's Denson getting his thousand yards. Denson's back in. Denson's back in the ball game, right? And, and Lou holds his last game here. And the whole seniors feel that you get it with a game here at Notre Dame. We talked about Bob Davey not wanting to be a distraction, not wanting to be a big We're part right. of this show, not being at the pep rally. Stepping back and letting these things happen because they deserve the right to happen here at Notre Dame, not getting in the way. Good point. Little play action, big rolling right. Oh, no, no. Looking to him for him back underneath to Kukovic. But goes to the far line, still on his feet. He battles his way to the three-yard line. And the last 12 yards are his and his alone. Oh, does he make a statement? The senior from Sterling Heights, Michigan. 6'5", 265 pounds, 27 yards total on the play. Well, the young man Whoa. thought I was insulting him when I called him an ugly tight end. <laughs> Well, you know, pretty tight ends take 45, 50-yard passes and stroll into the end zone. Ugly tight ends do the blue-collar hard work, take five or six shots and get those extra eight or nine yards. Ugly tight ends know how to block, and this young man is a quality Ooh, tight end. He is. Three-yard line, first down goal to go. Spencer and Dixon in the backfield. Down of the season. Well, if you ask Ron Paulus who he'd 
like to throw that touchdown to? I think it would have been Mark Edwards or per Kirk Levich. A couple of guys he came in here with, a couple of guys that are just your basic, hard-working football players, and really somebody that's going to cradle and cherish that type of a touchdown. He's in the record books along with his quarterback. And the extra point attempt. Jim Sanson. Smith the holder. It is good. 35 to nothing. Now, the record is tied. Nice touch. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. We're back at Notre Dame Stadium, and the record, of course, that we have been talking about is the record of Rick Meyer. His career record now tied. Ron Paulus and Rick Meyer, and of course, Paulus has a game and a half left. Their career record. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It would be questionable as to how much more Ron Paulus would play here today with a 35 nothing lead with 243 to go in the second quarter. But as you mentioned earlier, he's got SC next week. He's got the team goal down into the horizon of that big bowl game, the Alliance Bowl game on New Year's Day. So he'll have plenty of opportunities and well, picture, picture will tell you a lot. A Rutgers fan with a little smile for television and all of her friends who are watching. Scott Palumbo is going to kick it away. Not that good an effort to jump on and then pick up and then rock in his back. Here's Kevin Williams. Uh, you see John Sersani getting a chance to make another play. We saw him last week against Pittsburgh. Kevin Williams returned the ball. <laughs> He's excited. And he should be. Versus 10 at the 24. So Rutgers down now by a score of 35 to nothing. We'll start from their own 24 yard line. In case you weren't with us at the beginning of the telecast. Here's a running play inside for a couple of yards. This is only the second meeting between Rutgers and Notre Dame. The, the first meeting carrier. took place some 75 Michael years ago. Ron and Notre Dame shut out Rutgers in the polo grounds by a score of, of 48 to nothing. They lead here 35 to nothing. With still more than two minutes left to go in the first half. That is the official program. Well, look, look at the Tuesday. Thing, Tuesday. 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 They played on a Tuesday probably because it took the train from Friday to Monday right. to, get, to get to New York. <laughs> it's Tuesday, so it must be football at the polo ground. Oh, good defense. Burke Berry was there all the way. Burke Berry, well, yeah, I mean, down. You know, defense is one thing, but you think it's easy to play special teams in any real situation? Watch Jimmy Friday, one of Watch the backup the defensive ends, coming down on special teams. Oh, he gets a little splatter whack right there. Now he's getting the opportunity to head on down the field. So, you know, it's not only the people on offense and defense and specifically the quarterbacks, the records, that are having kind of a tough afternoon here today. They're sort of spreading this whole experience around. They're down in 13 at the 21-yard line. Sack of the quarterback. From the shotgun. By some time. Now he's out of time. He's going to sack the game. The coverage downfield. There simply was nowhere to go. And Saka is sacked again. Well, you made the mention earlier, Charlie. Bottom of the screen, number 13, Barry, coming on a defensive stunt. Getting there late, a perseverance sack, but I'd almost think about it if I was a quarterback. I know it's a rich family tradition of playing quarterback in his family, but Saka and quarterback. He should, play a, he should play under a different name. <laughs> a stage name. Time out. Back in a moment. One minute and five seconds. Time remaining in the first half. We mentioned that the game these two teams played some 75 years ago. Is that Notre Dame shut them out 48 to nothing. So that means that Notre Dame, they've outscored Rutgers 83 to nothing in the last 75 years. Our prediction is to return now. Good kick, gets it away under pressure. He returned one against Smith for the touchdown. And that's what they're gambling on here. He's going to lose actually a yard, maybe a yard and a half. 
you know, Mike Gibson, Mark the Gilbert, special teams, yards. the coordinator, has got to be very proud of the job his guys are doing covering the ball because they had to turn that tape on this week and watch Notre Dame absolutely shred Pittsburgh special teams. Three touchdowns on the return, and, you know, he's got his guys down on the ball. The punter's doing his job, getting the ball sloping down the field and hanging it up there, but the coverage is getting to the returners. And as you watch our ball game, you have a chance to check out the ticker and see how your favorite college team is doing this afternoon. And also stay with us at the end of the telecast for Lou Holtz. He will be addressing the student body and all the fans and the nation here at Notre Dame Stadium. We're going to stay here at Notre Dame Stadium after the game is over. Ron Paulus is brought down by Rashad Swinger from Manalapan, New Jersey. All right, we've got a pause in the action coming up at the half. Be sure to stay with us as we're going to join Greg Gumbel, Chris Collinsworth for Notre Dame halftime. They'll have a look at the special life and tragic death of former Notre Dame football captain Rodney Culver. Also more of the Bob Costas interview with Lou Holtz that we saw on the pregame show. All of that plus college scores and highlights. That's all coming up at halftime. So be sure to stay with us not only at halftime but also stay with us at the end of the ball game and it's senior day for the band also isn't it? well it is and one good thing for that young lady in the band is come halftime they'll be marching around the field staying warm you were down on the field for the ball game. you came actually it is really oh, cold it's, no, it's raw Whoa. all right it's the severe difference between cold and raw it's, ah. a, it's a damp cold right there yeah but mom knows how to take care well, of it well that's how i felt like i, I needed i felt <laughs> like i needed a full liner and the whole deal working a little blanket over my lap i'd be happy i noticed you tried to trade your nbc jacket for that for the game but mom wouldn't have anything it's second down and 12. Wallace, all the time in the world, deep over the middle, wide open. Ball to ground. Ball flush. Ball was knocked out on the tackle. They're going to rule it down. They're going to rule it down. That's the call from the official. 35 yards on the play. Rule iron on the tackle. Rutgers is claiming that you were right. Said, ask Randy. It came loose. Now, Strohmeyer came in there from the back and just stripped that ball out. I mean, that ball was on the ground. And we may have an overrule here. It is an overrule. Really that the ball, ball was Why is it? Watch what happens here. Brown's going to catch it. Watch Strohmeyer come in from the, from the left side of the screen and do a little karate chop over yeah. the ball. That ball is out. It is loose. And it's Rutgers. Yeah. The down. The down. There comes the you chop by Strohmeyer. You did not. You said. And there's the recovery. So. Paulus is arguing along the sideline with one of the officials. He said, that's not what you said. You made the call. Well, they overruled the call. Lou Holtz is going to come down and pull Paulus away. He doesn't want to lose him for the ball game. Rutgers has the ball. 31 seconds. That's the time remaining in the first half. Notre Dame up 35 to nothing. Here's the draw. Paul Nerone. Nice little spin move. And then he is back to about the 24-yard line. Gary Pomeroy, the, the sophomore from Swedesboro. And he is hit by uh, Johnny Sanders, the sophomore from Houston for Notre Dame. Johnny Sanders also in another play. Sitting the ball is marked in the 24-yard line. It'll be second down seven. and three, but time is going to expire. Well, is still fired up about that, about that fumble. I mean, it tells you something. He just wants more. He's a competitor. Isn't he? When you're on top of the team, you got him down. You get an opportunity to score more. Is better. So the first half comes to a close. We still have, of course, the second half of action. We have an action packed halftime and then Lou Holtz after the game. But right now, it's halftime. Let's go to New York. Great first opportunity to kick it off. Back and come out to the 20 yard line. Listen to him. See, you can just read it. What is this? What do you mean it's fire? Yeah. How did he do that? Yeah. Well, Ron Paulus takes the field here at the beginning of the of the second half. We've talked about him having the 41 touchdowns tying Rick Meyer. He will get that touchdown here today, I believe. He's listed as a senior. Remember, it'd be a great thing as a senior to get the record here at the stadium. Let's not also lose sight of the fact that he has the option of coming back for that fifth year. Yard 
line. And they stay on the run. There's Jamie Spencer, the fullback, plowing across the 30, out to the 32-yard line. She is black for the tackle. You know, and Charlie, Ron Paulus is not alone when you talk about fifth-year seniors. And they do want to come back first offensively as a fifth-year senior. Look what he's got with him. He's got his two twin towers. He's got Clevenger and Dowdy. He's got his center, Kaczynski, also a possible fifth-year guy. Up front, you've got you've got Dansby and Maiden that also could be fifth-year seniors. So a lot of solid football. If these, if these guys all come back for their fifth year. Audrey Dinson around the corner. Chadwick with the stop. Dinson continues on his march towards 1,000 yards. He has 72 yards in the ball game, needing 97. So he still has 25 to go. To become only the sixth man, and we pointed it out in the first half. And I'm like you, I'm amazed at the only five Irish running back prior to right, 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 right. won three times and won twice. And only five members of the team have rushed for more than a thousand yards. Paula says five right on top of good pass. He goes to Kevin Corella. That is Corella's fourth reception of the year. And interestingly enough, Kevin Corella, who normally uses the tight end specifically for blocking and see special teams duty. That time Corretto was lined up outside as the wide receiver by then on that quick slant. You know, Ron Paul has got to him on that one right there on that reception on an autumn. Back to back first downs. Now the Irish at their own 46 yard line. Spencer the fullback. Denson is the tailback. Play action. Right time. That's a to throw. That is really tough to throw. Zakia Chang, the senior from Tyler, Texas, the intended receiver, but rolling left as a right-handed thrower, and he didn't set and st set, stop and set. He does it on the run. That's really tough. It's all arms. Well, Charlie, I, I think what it honestly is, and if you talk to a Terry Shea on the far sideline or you talk to a Bill Walsh about that type of a pass, that's repetition. Ron Collins has not had the repetition in a passing offense to effectively throw that pass on a consistent basis. Second down and 10, three wide receivers all on the other side. Here is a quick out. This is Evan Mosley. Ron Paulus, Evan Mosley. Rutgers territory. Chris Sabula, the senior from Manville, New Jersey, along with Cameron Chadwick, the senior from Union, New Jersey, team up on the tackle. Pick up a five. We keep mentioning this football field and you know the fact that it keeps coming up in chunks as we watch Mosley take a chunk out of his helmet and get it off there. This field will also be replaced right after this football game. We saw it to go down and put a prescription turf type field here in South Bend. Mosley, three receptions, 83 yards. He's blocked by 16 yards, so he still needs nine yards to reach the yard plateau. I mean, this is a play where you get your quarterback running the option and giving it up for his halfback. Watch Pirates fight the hit, get the hit, but still be able to get this flip to Denson. Then it's just pure speed. You're getting some blocks downfield, specifically from your receiver, Mosley. But this is just Denson getting to do what he loves to do, and that's just turn on the burners on the corner. And we have a flag. Substitution infraction on the offense. Oh, be a five-yard penalty. Not allowed to have any more than the legal limit of players on the field in the huddle as you break the field and Lou Holtz's team had a little coordination problem. Audrey Denson now has rushed nine times for 88 yards. He needs nine yards. There it is, as we mentioned. Balls, sets, bumps, has pressure, steps away. Second man gets it. Rashad Swinger with the second. And he'll lose six yards on the play. 
Hey, the big senior 300 pounder has really had himself a hit of the game here today. He is the, the presence for the Rutgers defense inside. And when the pocket has collapsed, when Paulus has not had the time to the coverage down the field, more often than not, it has been Swinger coming in from his defensive tackle position and it's collapsed the pocket. And that is the third sack of the ball game for Rutgers. Second down and 21. Second back through there is Dixon leading nine. Is that going to be Good play by Aaron Brady. Brady. The South Pole from Hanover, Pennsylvania, the linebacker. Makes a nice tackle. Denson could not slip out of his grasp. So it will be a down. With 20 to go. And he still needs eight yards. Oh, he's going to get it. It's just a matter of when. Exactly. All these things will come here this afternoon against Rutgers for, for Paulus. It'll come for Denson. It'll come for Rosser. The time on the field will also come when it comes to fourth quarter for the seniors. The, the lesser known players and most people out there outside of their families won't be able to identify, but they'll always remember the moment. And for Lou Holtz, the 100 victory with that goal in the end zone. Yes, touchdown! 42 yards to Michael Jackson. That is the record for Ryan Boyle. 42 career touchdown passes. comes down and, and, nice job and, job and, after. and it takes a pass that is right on target some 50 yards down the field the extra point is pulled so the chicken. excitement no is good. back in the Why? chicken game for Notre Dame and the score remains Notre Dame 41 and Rutgers nothing and congratulations for Ron Palmer smiles all around he has the record Welcome back to Notre Dame, 11-16. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. And Notre Dame will be kicking off once again to Rutgers. Stephen Harper, the senior return man at the five-yard line. They've been keeping it away from him most of the day. But he may have a shot here. And he does. He's to the 15. Good speed if he can get to the corner. He can When he came to the sideline just a moment ago. Well, you know, there's certain things we talked about. You know, the, the transition from Lou Holtz to Bob Davey and, and the seamless nature. And I think part of the seamless nature you, you can anticipate here at Notre Dame is that relationship between the players and their head coach. For all the hype of, of Lou Holtz being such a, you know, a, a strict guy and, and, and a really a disciplinarian type, Ron Paul's every guy on the roster will tell you that this guy really cares about his players. They wouldn't pass up that experience along with the Notre Dame Bosch. Mike Stevens back in the quarterback. He hands off to Chad Bosch. And Ron he is stopped by the Ron Cowboy. Rutgers quarterbacks combined have completed only Pick one of two. nine passes. They have been intercepted twice. That was good for 10 yards. And the key there, Charlie, we've seen a lot of pressure, a lot of blitzing from unexpected areas. I think they came in here expecting outside pressure on the blitz. They've gotten the inside pressure on the blitz and a lot of man coverage outside. Inside pressure again. Play action back there. It ends on another side. Now let's go down to John Dodger on the sideline. Thanks, Charlie. You know, Paul Horning's with me. Charlie and Randy, and we've all talked a lot about Ron Paulus and his future in the pros. What's your, what are your thoughts? Well, I think he's got a very bright future in the pros. Unlike a lot of people around the country who I think have, have knocked this young man, I think he's going to be a great pro. Uh, he's not you in the right. most, uh, the best of offenses for him here. Now, he's looked wonderful today, and he's broken every record that stands here at this university, and I don't know why everybody knocks him. The biggest question is whether or not he's going to return, and everybody thinks he's going to return because they say he's going to move up in the draft. I think he'll go on and go right into the pros this year. So that's just a wild guess. Charlie, uh, I'm going to go back to you. Actually, Charlie, let me ask Paul one more question here. Do you think that Lou Holtz leaving will impact his decision in Bob Davey coming? What do you think about that and any impact on Paul? I think he's got something to think about. There'll be a new offense coming in here, whether or not he 
uh, is comfortable in this one would rather get into maybe let's say an offensive corner came in and wanted to really throw the football around he might well stay because he's going to move up in the draft a lot of the scouts have said well he's a third round draft choice I tell you what there'd be a lot of teams uh, jumping a little bit early if he's around for the third round you've got a surprise on me well thank you very much um, I know your Heisman choices were for uh, you're going to vote for Pace we got to cover this part okay, I know Pace is my, was my pick last year I was a uh, Thank you, Paul. Rick Hitch is calmer. Well, we know what the, we know the way that Paul Horning as a Heisman Trophy winner is going to uh, to vote. He was, of course, a Heisman Trophy winner for Notre Dame. Back in a moment. Notre Dame out in front of Rutgers by a score of 41 to nothing. Just under 10 minutes. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. Ron Paul is staying in the ball game. I'm a bit surprised about that, but I'm sure that. From his standpoint, he would just as soon play, possibly through the third quarter. As this could well be his last one. Is that going to be enough? That will, that will take him to the 1,000-yard plateau. 98 yards in this ball game. He needed 97. He now is 1,001. And on this college line, Charlie, 1,000 yards is significant. from Lou Holtz. So he was in because he wanted to be there when Denson reached the thousand yard plateau. And there's Audrey Denson, number 31, sophomore, Larder Hill, Florida. <laughs> no, no, he's smiling now, oh. but Audrey, Audrey, don't get to your own way. Don't do what we see guys do before. Let's get a thousand yards. Take your next, next pitch and lose three yards. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you fall off of that plateau. Yeah, he's, he's congratulating the right guys, too. Those guys up front, that offensive line has done a lot of good work for him over these last, specifically, the last four or five weeks have been his push towards that 1,000 yards. Jerry is Jackson, the sophomore from Tupelo, Mississippi, that we saw last week. The option quarterback did so well against Pitt in the second half of that ball game as we played on ball. Great handoff to Jamie Spencer, his fullback. And Jamie goes to the 44-yard line. Hey, and now that you've seen Paulus get that passing record, I think you're going to see an awful lot Brady, of this now out of this Notre Dame battle. offense. A lot of straight ahead, a lot of fullback, a lot of running the ball, and a lot of Lou Holtz football. And possibly a lot of Robert Farmer because he now comes in to replace Denson, who comes out with a total of 1,001 yards. <laughs> And here's Farmer. Has the corner, then bumped out around the 40-yard line. You know, one thing Paul Harding was telling John Dockery just now about Ron Paulus, I, I agree with, with Paul Harding about the future that Ron Paulus has on the next level as a quarterback. I, I think he's got the tools. I think he's a guy that can play the position. I disagree with him about next year. I think Ron Paulus will come back specifically because of the offense he has a chance to run, specifically because of the chance he has to upgrade himself, and specifically because in a featured offense, he will be in the Heisman Trophy run next year if he comes back for that fifth year. And Notre Dame has seven Heisman Trophy winners. Angelo Bertelli, Tom Jack, Leon Hart, John Latner, Paul Horning, that was in 1956, John Hewitt, and Tim Brown. Audrey Denson, 12 carries, 101 yards in the ball game. Hornet won in 1956, and I believe, I'm checking the record book quickly, I believe is the only one to win it playing on a losing football team. And therein lies the tale of our running back, also in college this year, that is a Heisman Trophy candidate. And could well, uh, you get a lot of votes, but I'm not sure you'll win. Well, Troy Davis, the halfback at Iowa State. Yeah, if there's right. justice in it, on, and the people are voting for the guy that probably is the best football player, he'd be the one to get the Heisman Trophy, as far as I'm concerned. Not, not uh, Orlando Pace. Orlando Pace is a very, very good offensive tackle on the collegiate level. They, they're counting pancake blocks and everything else. It reminds me of the...
pancake watch when Tr Tony Mandel yes. was at Michigan State, also touted for the Heisman Trophy. But uh, you know, for, for my money and for my my opinion, I, I think the kid from Iowa State. Is very good. Dixon bumps it all the way to the 20 yard Making it 15 yards on the, the 21. And you know, he's Cooper doing it here, Dixon, because he's getting good blocking up front. I mean, you just see the crunching First going on. Ten, I he's he's got the out in front of him. He's got his fullback out in front of him. I mean, this is dominant football, and this is what you're going to see for the next quarter and seven minutes that we have left to go in this football game. Denson now, four straight, 100-yard game, six on the year, ninth in his career. Fire replacing big hole that's out. And he rambles Robert to the 12-yard line. Robert Farmer. And that offensive line of Notre Dame, they're really doing a job today. Well, the best way to describe this offense Aaron, is running the way they want it to run eight eight. is methodical. This offense is very, very methodical. I mean, a coach like Lou Holtz that loves to run this style, loves it when people refer to his offense as boring. Because when his offense is boring, it's working. And when his offense is boring, he's winning. And he is winning today, and he is winning big. Jamie Spencer. Jamie Spencer with the call. And Jamie goes to the seven yard line. Maybe the made by Strohmeyer. And it's going to be first down and goal to go. When you start to play the numbers game, you might as well take it into consideration now. Notre Dame is up 41 to nothing. Last time these two teams played, 75 years ago. The final score was 48 to nothing. So a touchdown extra point, at least uh, we have deja vu. Good old deja vu, but it's still there. On the reverse, it's to the bottom, it's to the corner, dives in. He's got six yards and the score. to tie the previous outing between the two teams. Sansom, and he's got this one. And Notre Dame is up 48 to 9 with 5.53 left to go. We're in the third. Wisconsin 14, Illinois. Notre Dame nothing. has scored seven third times. Period, Autry Dixon, Joy Goodspeed, 11. Spencer, Griplevin, Johnson, eight, and Mosley. And that picture Utah, there, Lou Hulse. Third really, period, really Georgia Tech says, uh, you know, if you're thinking, you know, a penny for your thoughts, wouldn't you love to be inside of what's going on in Lou's head right now? Third period, Georgia Tech. Here's a look at Stephen Harper, the deep back on the kickoff return team for Rutgers. Chris McCarthy is going to kick off for Notre Dame. Emmett Moses scoring that last touchdown. That, by the way, is his first touchdown of the year. He's a senior from Aurora, Colorado. And Harper has it. The speedster from the 10 to the 20. Crosses the 25. The down around the 26, 27 yard line. Flying goes down after the play. Illegal block in the back on the return, 10 yards, first down. 547, that is the time remaining in the third. The ball is spotted at the 16 yard line. And we have a timeout. So we'll step aside. We'll be back to Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish are up 48 to nothing. Yeah, that's an exhausted leprechaun just doing 48 push-ups. He, of course, was the head of the Navy game in Dublin. Well, he's going to stay warm, too, because he's not done doing push-ups. He might need a little help. Might, might have push-up by proxy coming here after he gets about 60. Rutgers with three wide receivers on top. Outside. 
inside the 30 to the 33 yard line and a first down. Walter King, the freshman from Hackensack, New Jersey, pulls it in for 17 yards and a first down. Hey, and that's exactly what Stevens and his offense wanted to do from the very get go. What you're going to see out of this offense, though, of Terry Shays, is nothing different. They are going to run the offense as he intends it. He is not going to change because of the huge deficit. He's going to keep running this West Coast Bill Walsh style. Two wide receivers. Draws a quick audible. Here's the blitz coming. Has to hurry. Does. And it's a little low. Good coverage. Alan Rossum had the coverage. Rossum on the coverage. And you see a little bit of what Bob Davies allowed to do defensively because of that coverage by Rossum. But the speed of Rossum and Covington is enabling him to do all that blitzing with the linebackers inside and manning those guys up on the outside because he knows his cornerbacks can make the plays. And you can check out the ticker to see how your favorite college team is doing this afternoon. I'm still looking for the possibility of seeing Rossum on offense. You know, he kind of hinted about that a couple of weeks ago. Here's the draw. Gary Fauntleroy. Gary Fauntleroy. Fauntleroy will take about, he'll take six or seven players with him. No, but he's not going down. You look at the lower body on that guy. It tells you it's going to take more than one guy to bring him down. Two. 245 pounds, right. and he's got those great big legs that all coaches look for. Four. Four. And he's already rushed for 41 yards in the ball game on eight carries. One of the bright spots for the Rutgers, Carlin Knights. Mike Stevens, the quarterback. Montroy is in motion. Wanted to set a screen, but everybody was picked up. There's too much pressure from the inside. Stevens just looking and looking, and then Corey Bennett took him down. Fourth down. That is the seventh sack by Notre Dame. Paul is just explaining, you're not going to go in. Either you or Kerplovich is going to get another chance to drop back in the pocket again. As you see, Stevens, and you know, I'm sure Paul is glad he's getting a little bit better protection than Stevens getting uh, right there. Slow band to punt. And this is that punt formation. They had one fake earlier. But this is fourth and 17, so don't worry about it here. Set up specifically to keep pressure out of the kicker's face. Pressure again. They almost get to him. Fair catch. Rossum takes it at the 27 yard line, goes down with it. 43 yards on the kick. Under pressure. Timeout. Back in a moment. Notre Dame leads it 48 to nothing. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. I'm with uh, Ron Wallace's parents, Susan and Ron. And Susan, what kind of a year has it been for you? Well, I just wish every game would have been like this one. <laughs> this is the kind I like. <laughs> and Ron, you said this was kind of a special game. What do you have in your hand? Well, I have the ball that he broke the record with, the most touchdowns thrown by a quarterback at Notre Dame, and, and that's really kind of special for us. I, I'm really happy for Ronnie. It's been a tough four years here at Notre Dame, and uh, this is a fitting way uh, for his last home game to end his, end his career possibly here at Notre Dame. Possibly. You said the word. I'm happy for him. I'm you said the word possibly, so I'll have to. I mean, does Ron stay for another year? Does the departure of Lou Holtz impact his decision? Well, I, I think that what we'll have to do is we're going to take a look at uh, who the new coach is. I mean, I know there are a lot of rumors around right now. It is. It is uh, Bob Davey. Oh, it is. It's official now. Okay, well. Uh, we're, I'm sure Ronnie has a meeting uh, that he's going to meet with uh, Coach Davies and see what kind of offense he's going to run. And um, we're, we'll do, uh, see what we can get some evaluations from the NFL and then make a decision. Right now, we're not sure just exactly what he's going to do. But it would be to probably to his advantage if they had open their offense up a little bit. Uh, a little more uh, for him to possibly to come back. One final question. You mentioned the pressure. If you had to do it all over again, Susan, you were advising your son, would you tell him to come to Notre Dame or would you think about someplace else? I would say do it exactly the same way. We love Notre Dame. He loves Notre Dame. Thank you both. Yeah, Good luck. Thank you very much. There's one other item, and that is, because Ron has talked to us about this several times, and that is he came here to win a national championship. They have not done that. This would give him one more shot, and you pointed out he, uh, he has a lot of the supporting cast coming and possibly coming back with him. Well, exactly. And, you know, his dad mentioned right there that, you know, get an evaluation from the NFL. And, you know, we, we decided to go out and see if we could get an evaluation of our own. When the 
gentleman that uh, I played for, Bill Walsh, who I consider uh, the greatest evaluator of talent in the league over the last 10 to 15 years. Kevin Coretta just pulled in that pass. And uh, let's see what Bill Walsh has, has to say about Ron Paul. I think Ron is still physically maturing, believe it or not. I think he'll be just a little bigger, girth-wise. He'll be a little stronger. And I think he'll be able to deal with injuries a little, a little better. Uh, as of yet, he hasn't demonstrated the classic passing style so typical of an Aikman or a Young or a Marino. But I think he's capable of it. He's going to be an active quarterback. He's going to be able to move in the pocket, throw the ball well. But I believe Ron will probably take a year or two longer to develop as an NFL quarterback than people thought he would have a few years ago. Interesting what Bill said, and I, I thought that we saw a little bit more of that in today's game. Well, I think a lot of what Bill's saying, too, is predicated on Ron Paulus going to the pros okay. next year. I think part of what his decision process with his parents and himself, if he gets a pro-style offense, a throwing offense here at Notre Dame, he cuts down that lead in time on the other side that Bill Wall speaks of, that year or two maturing process. If he gets that kind of an offense to come back to him, Robert Palmer breaks it clear. He goes to the 40-yard line of Rutgers. He makes up 15 yards on the play. We have a minute and 40 seconds. It, 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 it's, it's definitely the last home game of the year. Now, it's not so much professional cameras, but it's a little sideline ones that come out because, you know, you, you look at that, you know, it's an opportunity to, to take the pictures, and it's obviously an opportunity to pile up the yards in this game for Notre Dame. The surprising thing is really, I think a lot of people expected a lot of pounding the ball out of Lou. I was one of those. Lou came in here with a plan. He was going to get Ron Paulus that record. That was his first plan. Part B of his first plan was to get Oliver Benson with a thousand yards rushing. Well, I don't think that was ever really an issue <laughs> for Lou in this <laughs> offense because you know, get it. That's hey, right. when they're being wild, crazy, and wacky yeah. by their standards, they're throwing 20 times a game. That's and, wild and, and crazy. And they're pretty wacky right now. <laughs> True. And speaking of Audrey Denson, there he is. With his fourth straight 100-yard game, six-man in Notre Dame history. Rushed for 1,000 yards in a season. You see Jarius Jackson running the offense, you know immediately, you don't even know, need to know anything about football, that he is an option quarterback. Entirely different type of quarterback than Ron Paulus is. Well, okay. this style of offense is what he does best, but you know, this offense of Lou Holtz is in the last month, Charlie, has really blossomed. He made the statement yesterday that he thought this team was playing about as good as maybe anybody in the country. Score to see that this team is on a roll offensively. Into the third quarter, we and get set for the 18-12 overture. Another tradition here. And we'll return to South Bend after these messages and a word from your local station. <laughs> Here at Notre Dame, they call it lose overture. At the end of the third quarter, the thumb and the index finger, the letter L. Lou Holtz going into his final quarter as head coach here at Notre Dame Stadium. They have another game remaining against John Robinson and the Trojans of USC in the Coliseum in Los Angeles next Saturday. But this will wrap it up at home. Right on target. Perfect pass. Rakai Nelson streaking 38 yards. And still another member of the team scores a touchdown. This tells you something. We mentioned Jarius Jackson being an option quarterback, but he's an option quarterback with a great arm. And one would think 
The receiver position also in the future is safe at Notre Dame as Jarius Jackson celebrates his touchdown pass. That is his third touchdown pass of the season. Notre Dame now has scored eight touchdowns. Eight separate players have scored. The extra point is good. And the margin stretches to 55 to nothing. A photo opportunity for Lou Holtz, his family, as they gather on the sideline. And when the game is over, stay with us. Lou is going to talk with John Dockery. He's also going to speak to the student body, to the fans here, and to everyone across the nation that will join as soon as the game is over. Right after the game, his farewell address to the student body and alumni. Chris McCarthy kicks off. Here is Stephen Harper on the return. Harper cannot get to the outside as he is tripped up. Joy Goodspeed makes the tackle. And he, by the way, is one of the Irish who has scored a touchdown. 14 minutes and 44 seconds in this era. Lou Holtz as head coach, the seniors, an emotional goodbye. And for the stadium as we now know, when you see around the top, what they have done, they've done the expansion outside of the stadium, and then it will move inside. And above, you can see it will be enlarged by some 22,000 seats. Three wide receivers for Rutgers. They're going to rule it incomplete. Walter King, the intended receiver, and Rossum had the coverage. Oh, nice job by Steven standing in there delivering that ball. He put it right on King's, uh, not so much in his hands, but inside of his left hip, a ball he should have caught. Notre Dame predominantly right now at this point still has an awful lot of their starters in on defense, so expect more of the same we've seen for three quarters, and that's aggressive blitzing and pressure from the inside of the defense. Devin Harper is in as a cornerback. His brother plays for the Chargers in the NFL. Dwayne. Elvin Dansby makes the last stop on Jackie Krugs. And talking about the stadium there, there's still two more games to be played in the stadium, and it seems very fitting that these two games be played. The intramural program here at Notre Dame is such a strong intramural program, and there are two intramural football games that will be played here tomorrow afternoon, then that is it. There's Kevin Coretta, we talked about earlier, blocked the punt to set up that first Irish touchdown. Rutgers still trying to score their first points in history. Against Notre Dame, this pass is incomplete. Tight coverage there by Harper, and then he kind of peeked back over his shoulder. This kind of conversation with an official and a smile during a, game, a photo opportunity. Lou, what has happened? You know what it was? The photographer, he started to walk away, and he goes, No, 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 coach. One more time, like you're mad at it. <laughs> Well, you've noticed uh, most of this second half and a good part of the second second quarter, Lou Holtz and Bob Davey, both his successor, neither was wearing the headsets, the communications up to the box or whatnot. They've concentrated more on the, the players on the sideline. Another good kick by Jared Sloban. And Rossum takes it, juggles into the 17, and uh, is wrapped up immediately. Good coverage. Rutgers had very good punt. Coverage 54 yards on the kick, only three yards on the return. They have shut down that part of Notre Dame, but that's about all that they've shut down back in a moment. The World Cup of Golf, of course, scheduled next, but don't forget at the end of the ball game, we will stay here. And Lou Holtz, as he will address the student body, alumni, and the alumni across the nation and around the world off of the satellites, all will be joining in to watch here on our NBC coverage. Ken Berry. Barry to the 35 to the 40 to the 50 yard line and then he slips as he makes his cut at the 46 yard line of Rutgers. Well he had the blocking he had a couple more defenders in front of him but this is what I refer to as your head outrunning your feet. Sounds kind of like a goofy thing but you know on this 33 yard run he gets daylight out in front of him then the dirt gets him because he tries to do things with his feet that uh, his head thinks he can, but the feet and the dirt won't let him. 
First down Notre Dame. Straight shot up the middle by Robert Farmer. 43 yard line. Sean Devlin, the senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Defensive tackle brings him down. Robert Farmer now has rushed for 56 yards in 10 carries. Has a touchdown. I was wondering what Jay Leno did on the weekends. Well, he's a scarlet knight. <laughs> Farmer again, there's the hole, 30 yard line, leaps one man, and then finally pulled down around the 15 yard line. 28 yards on the play was Shin Black, the true freshman from Etiwanda, California, who finally stopped him. Well, watch this whole thing, and this is just dominant blocking from the Irish offense and speed from Farmer. This young man against Boston College a few weeks back. Three carries for 98 yards. An impact. Kind of an instant offense impact running back. And he had a career high 140 yards and two touchdowns against Pitt. And he continues that high average. 11 carries, 84 yards. He's right at the eight yard average. Timeout. Back to the moment. And with this beautiful cheerleader cheering them on, Notre Dame, a total of 588 total yards in the ball game. And they threaten here. It is Farmer. And Robert Farmer fights his way to the in the background. A wave, but it is a Lou wave. You can hear Lou as the wave moves around the stadium. Well, you can tell. You know, this is a high academic kind of crowd here that Lou's used to having in front of him. Because most places just do the wave in one direction. This place is doing the wave in two directions. It's sort of confusing the people in the middle. They don't want to know whether they're <laughs> standing up to go right or standing up to go left. But they're going one way or wrapping around the stadium, wrapping around the other way. Now that I've been nice about the wave, I gotta tell you I hate it. I know you do. That's what I can believe. It. Here it is. The wave crashes on the far Charlie, side. Charlie, it's 55 to nothing. The wave's exciting at 55 to nothing. Here's Robert Farmer in the end zone. Excuse me, do I, did I, didn't I say 61 to nothing? Yes, yes. Robert Farmer's second touchdown of the ball game. First time scoring 60 plus points in consecutive games since 1932. Of course, defeating Pitt 60 to 6 last week. And Terry Shea has seen his Scarlet Knight defense scored on repeatedly this year and repeatedly today with offensive execution. This Iris offense has done it predominantly with that just methodical style of offense. Meanwhile, Robert Farmer has rushed for 99 yards and his two touchdowns. And Jim Sanson will attempt to point after. And injured Rutgers players up to the far sideline. That's the reason for the delay. Hunter Smith is the holder. He is an excellent holder. High snap, but he gets it down. It is hooking, but it is good. And Notre Dame leads 62 to nothing with still 11 and a half minutes remaining. Back for the kickoff. I thank you for the update by the way that is the son yes you're right of Bob Greasy a former broadcast partner of mine at NBC for several years and now doing an outstanding job with Keith Jackson at ABC. Scott Palumbo is going to kick it away for Notre Dame. Oh he nails this one. Harper takes it a yard deep and uh, he waits and now he runs it out. He's got the corner. He's to the 30, and then he steps out of bounds. Maybe the weight, I think the weight helped. He had a 33 yard return. Everybody kind of slowed down, and he got to the outside. And don't forget to stay with us at the end of the ball game here. Lou Holtz and his farewell address to the student body here in the stadium and the alumni here at NBC. As we cover Notre Dame football, we're going to stay on the air and satellite, of course, will pick it up all over the world for all of the, the Notre Dame alumni and, uh, and fans and friends of Lou Holtz. And he will make that address. in addition he's going to talk personally with John Dockery so stay with us when this game is over as this is the last game for Lou Holtz at home as the head coach of Notre Dame they play 
Southern California in Los Angeles next week. Little play action by Stevens. And he goes deep. Sideline has a man there, and he has it. And it's Andy Holland who pulls it in. Nice play for Rutgers, 22 yards. 62 to nothing, Charlie. I mean, this, this offensive display we talked about earlier about the, the points and the yards and everything else. Look at this. This is in consecutive games since 1905, and you don't find these names just anywhere in football history. But guess what? American Medical, our, I, our guys. I got, we got a note on them from That's American right. Medical. Yeah. I heard, yeah. I heard from their hey, alumni association. Saint Viator, my favorite, is there with Adrian. <laughs> Same here. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Good. That's all right. I thought Saint Viator was a one. Yeah, what do I know? Stevens is down as he is hit again. That American Medical, we can go back to that graphic for a minute. In the first half of that of that game, Notre Dame led 121 to nothing. That's uh, the 1905 game. The second half was shortened to just eight minutes because the doctors had to have dinner and catch a train to get back to Chicago. And there were a lot of sick people that were glad about that. They scored, Notre Dame scored 27 touchdowns. But you know they have problems with their kicking game now. They had it. They missed 20 extra points. Well, touchdowns back then too were only five That's points. Yeah. So uh, Gene Semania. Steven Steven still down on the ground. He took a heck yeah. of a blow. Gene Semania of Toledo, Ohio, sent us all of that information. And as he stated in his letter, it was more that we really wanted to know. All right, let's see what happened to Mike Stevens. Well, he holds on to the ball for as long as he can, and, and he pays for it at the very end, but he gets the high-low double shot. He gets the shot right in the side of the head. After the game. Mm. And as you mentioned earlier, he's a baseball player, third baseman, good arm. Came back to, uh, had had a, a little time in spring training a couple of years ago, and came back to help out the program. Well, he originally started at the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then came in as a as a walk on at Rutgers and you know Terry Shea's program here is going to get headed in the right direction with the kind of leadership he provides. He needs the talent. I mean New Jersey is a, is a talent rich area yes. that major programs around the country have been uh, plucking people out of mm -hmm. there for years and years and what he needs is is the quarterback position the speed at the wide receiver. He needs the size on the defensive side of the ball. Specifically, he needs his kids in his home state to find out about and start believing in what Rutgers can do for him. And uh, he's got wonderful facilities there. And I'm personally, I got to wish the guy all the world luck. He's, he's a neat man, and he, I really like it. You're absolutely right. They have the new stadium that they've had a, just a just a couple of years, and that the whole program. Oh, they they start recruiting and getting uh, the top players out of New Jersey. Oh, they will be a powerhouse very quickly on the national scene. And what you're seeing here out of, out of his offense is what I talked about in the third quarter. They are down 62 to nothing with about 11 minutes to go in this ball game. Terry Shea is still running the offense. He was running on the first play of the game. His kids are getting a chance to run this offense against a top 10 ranked team. And this doesn't happen every week for these guys. Here is the draw. Gary Fauntleroy, he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Antoine Jones, the sophomore, making the play, number 85 for Notre Dame. And there's Ron Paulus. The giveaway, of course, is the cap. When you put the cap on, that's kind of, that's uh, that's the giveaway. But he's been out of the ball game for uh, quite a spell, setting uh, his personal record and there to make sure that Autry Denson set his. 42 career touchdown passes. He leads now all Notre Dame quarterbacks. And Denson now joining five other Notre Dame running backs with a career 1,000 yards. Here's the blitz. Nobody picked it up. Whoa, nobody picked it Charlie, up. Charlie, and they specifically Saka audibleized because of the defense he saw. He saw something. He was trained to audibleize by Terry Shaw and his staff when he saw a certain type of blitz. Just before the snap, Notre Dame shifted the defensive line and brought the inside blitz again. For about the fifth time, it's been the inside blitzer from the linebacker position that has gotten the initial hit on the quarterback. Bobby Howard and Lamont Bryant were both coming on the blitz for Notre Dame. The Irish take over on downs, 9.48. That is the time remaining. 
Notre Dame out in front of Rutgers by a score of 62 to nothing. And of course another sellout crowd here. They watch Robert Farmer as he goes over 100 yards and just like the Energizer Bunny he keeps on going. Well that's his running style and when you look at a guy like Farmer it's not like you're you're looking at a tiny little back Robert Farmer's 511 probably pushes it about 230 pounds you know sort of like a little quicker leaner younger version of a Jerome Bettis who also played here at Notre Dame and really has been flourishing with the Pittsburgh Steelers this year and you know just that size the, the, the wiggle and speed you don't expect out of 230 but when you're trying to tackle them you get the power you expect out of 230 and as you saw Farmer's second consecutive game over 100 yards rushing here's Ken Berry who gets the call. Jared Cooper the two freshman from San Jose California. And there is a look at Robert Farmer. He had two touchdowns against Pitt and he has two touchdowns here today. Senior Bolingbrook Illinois. And he continues to average right at eight eight and a half yards per carry. Ken Berry. Barry the junior from Berkeley Missouri go ahead you know interesting thing too about farmer when we talk to him he's he's a finance major here at Notre Dame I said well, what do you want to do he goes well I'd like to get out there and do some you know really socially responsible type work and work with some charities and things like that and then maybe go to work for a bank and and then like well do some little entrepreneurial things. And so what are you trying to say? He goes, I'll make a lot of money. That's right. <laughs> he, he also dropped Wall Street in there in passing. My bet is he does it backwards. I, He'll be a responsible person that makes a lot of money yeah. and then does the charity stuff. I think that he'll do it all, though. I certainly can. Here's Joey Goodspeed. And a fumble, the ball comes loose. Joey Goodspeed on the carry. That's Mike Denver. Mike Denver. Offensive guard. That ball pops straight up into the air and Joey Goodsby watched the stick in the defensive backfield. Helmet on the ball it looked like yeah right there. Helmet on the ball ball comes right into the air and Denver falls on it. Jared Cooper of Rutgers is the man who jarred the ball loose. First down at the 15 yard line 741 and counting time remaining in the game. Here comes a blitz down the line by Rutgers and it is successful. Well that was Wingate coming from his safety position all the way in the, the top side of that play. He hit that on the run. I mean he never hesitated. He timed that perfectly. Question. Rutgers standpoint way out of it overmatched. You had in your career games that happen like that. They stay in. They fight fight fight. What is that feeling like. You know you have no chance to win but you don't give up. Well much like you know Terry Shea's offense is running their plays. You know Rod Sharpless's defense there you saw the coordinator for Rutgers is running his defense. They're doing what they need to do. They know their assignment. You know these aren't you know these are sharp kids. These big East schools get a lot of awfully smart athletes and these kids know they're out of the game but they also know they're getting an opportunity to execute the offenses and the defenses they're coached. Flag down on the far side. You know one thing too I'm sure there's a lot of criticism out there for you know Notre Dame last two weeks. Pitt big score this week Rutgers big Holding score. On the offense 10 yards spot of the foul. Still play second down. You know but by the same token as you take a look at Lou you know lose Lou's as loose as you'll ever see him yes. on the sideline. You know you look at a look also at schools Charlie like Syracuse and West Virginia and Miami. They're in the Big East. They every year build their records and get into the top 10 into the top 15 ranking wise around America by playing these other teams in the Big East. A team like Rutgers though I don't expect in the future coming up to be quite the speed bump that some of the other teams in the Big East have been. Here's the call. Delay on the offense five yards still second down. Yeah, we keep mentioning that that post game speech yes. by Lou to the, the students and alumni here it's a. Uh, for those of you not aware Lou Holtz is one of the featured speaker speakers around the country at quite a few gatherings he uh, has been known to pick up an honorarium or two for oh, that and uh, he is an excellent public speaker so this is not like um, 
somebody that's rarely uh, done this type of thing. He's one of the better public speakers in the country, and the difference will be this will not be scripted. This will be purely heartfelt. Damon Mosley, the ball carrier. And he'll have quite an audience. When you consider we have uh, 60,000 plus here that are staying, uh, they will stay, of course, to hear him nationwide and then off the satellites around the around the world. Well, and Charlie, too, we, we've mentioned the finals. Uh, you know, the last game for the seniors in the stadium and, and the last game of the stadium. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as it sits, a lot of this stuff is gone out after here. A lot of it will be sold, you know, pieces of the turf and pieces of the benches and pieces of the press box and the elevator shell out of the press box. All sorts a, of I things, would make a but bill nobody, in the nobody is leaving early. That's right. I want to bid the elevator. That's right. Here's Mosley out of the tailback. And he's going to go to around the 22 yard line. We're moving on the five minute mark time remaining. Notre Dame is up 62 to nothing. And something happens in a ball game like this that happens in a ball game like this. And it's one of the things that just it will drive announcers crazy. Devron Harper who is a defensive back has come in on offense wearing number 10. Now fourth down. They're not going to go for a field goal here Charlie. They're going to go ahead and go on first down fourth down. Rona is now the quarterback. And here is the pitch to Mosley. And he will go inside the 50, just barely inside the 15 yard line. He does not pick up the first down. And so Rutgers holds. They will take over on downs. With the score, Notre Dame 62, Rutgers nothing. And I'll finish my train of thought. And we return after these messages. Just over four and a half, just my voice is going over four and a half minutes to go as we just go down to John Dockery. Doc. You know, Charlie, you and Randy were talking about the old stadium closing into the Lou Holtz here. Well, Randy, I'd like you to know that I do have a piece of the stadium in here. <laughs> and do I have a bargain for you? For a mere $125, <laughs> I'll get you this brick in a case. For $500, I can get you the brick, a case, and a seat. And for the rock bottom price of a mere $90, I can have 40 pounds of crushed brick dropped in your driveway. The perfect Christmas present. <laughs> Doc, that looks like an awfully new brick. If I'm spending money on a brick, babe, I want an old one. I want, I, I want one that reeks old. I don't this want is an new. authentic brick. Now, would you accuse me of trying to peddle uh, a brick that, that was not Doc, authentic? Doc, Doc, you got a lot of people watching. Tell me that. Tell me that's one off the new, off the outside, the new one. It's got to be well, new. Well, they one. will guarantee if you do order, <laughs> you mail order, that they will get you an authentic brick from the uh, demolition of the stadium here. <laughs> My credibility is at stake, guys. Hey, you know, at least throw it down and antique John. it a little bit for me if I'm going to pay that much money for it. John, John, put it in your pocket, and I'll talk to you about that one later. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the football game, Jackie Crooks is the ball carrier for Rutgers. And what has happened in a game like this is I started that trade of thought before we went away on our commercial break, is that you see all kinds of players that you have to kind of scramble to find them somewhere, somewhere on a depth chart. Mike Frota, the... Senior quarterback from Peru, Illinois, was in just a moment ago to hand off on a play. And also, we had a number 35 in on offense a moment ago for Notre Dame, which that meant that either it was Robert Phelps, who's a cornerback, or Scott Palumbo. It was Scott Palumbo, the punter, who was in on offense. So we have clarified that. So we're seeing a bit of everything today. Palumbo, the senior from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, here are today's Chevrolet players of the game. For Rutgers, Gary Fontenleroy, and for Notre Dame, Ron Paulus. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students so that they may continue their education. Chevrolet and the NCAA have been, proud, have been a proud partnership for more than a quarter of a century. So congratulations to Gary and to Ron. And Ron is laughing and chuckling, and that's what you can do when your ball club is up 62 to nothing. Hey, come out! Timeout has been called, and that stops the clock. Audrey Denson is the, there's Bob Davey. He will become the next head coach of Notre Dame, and he joins a great list of head coaches here. Well, you know, Charlie, too, from a standpoint of you also have to consider when you're hiring a coach, someone to lead you 
not only for the next few years, but you're talking about leading a team and a, and a school into the next century. I mean, we're almost we're staring to the year 2000 dead into the face. College football is going to change as it always and continuously has. And I thought Notre Dame made an excellent selection in a Bob Davey. Keep this team in this and this in football administration on the track that Lou Holtz got it back on, starting with the national championship and, and the, uh, you know, the, the return of the glory to Notre Dame, uh, the glory days in Notre Dame, and I, I think Bob Davey was the guy to keep it there. Jared Slovan to punt for Rutgers. Audrey Denson is the return man. Denson backs up, signals for the fair catch. He fumbles it, fair catch is off, and then he drops it. Picks it up, recovers it at the 41 or the 42 yard line. 41 yards on the kick. A uh, loss of three on the return and almost 700 yards in total offense at this point. Still with some uh, two, two minutes and 23 seconds left to go. You're going to see a lot of ground game. All substitutions and now for Notre Dame, but the, uh, the theory will not change for Lou Holtz's offense. And as you looked at Bob Davey, I mentioned the Honor roller coaches, of course, Lou Holtz, Dan Devine, Aero Procedure, Joe Kaharick, Terry Brennan, Hugh DeFore, Ed McKeever, Frank Leahy, Elmer Layden, all the way back to Newt Rockney, and then you run it back to 1894 in J.L. Morrison. And here's the pitch to Mosley. Mosley dropped for a loss. Hunter Smith. Number 17 is the quarterback. He's a sophomore. 6'2-210. You've seen him as the punter. In Sherman, Texas. Not a lot there for Ken Berry. As the clock continues on its inexorable march, we come to the close of an era. Lou Holtz, the stadium as you now know it, and the seniors. Lou Holtz now, this will be victory number 100. As the head coach at Notre Dame, he would like to reach 102, and that would be three shy of the record here held by Newt Rockney. He's got his work cut out. John Robinson would like to defeat him in the Coliseum, and then we'd see whether or not they go to a bowl game. Pressure from the backside. Pass it. Pretty good toss. Yeah, John Sarasani again got a reception last week. We seen him, saw him at a big block earlier today. Gets himself another catch this week. It'll be fourth down and 14. So if I were these seniors for Notre Dame today, I would take my time getting off the field. For a lot of them, this may be the last time any of these young men have on a football uniform playing organized football. Mm -hmm. Don't waste the time. Don't just run in. Enjoy what you're going through right now. Stay out here and soak it all up. Chris Wachtel will be kicking. Senior from Masson, Ohio. You're right. These are moments to be cherished for a lifetime. And again, a quick reminder, when the game is over, we've still got 18 seconds to go. Don't go away. Stay with us. Lou Holtz will be addressing the student body, the alumni, and... All of those watching on NBC. Here's the pressure. He gets it away. Pretty good catch. And it's going to roll to the 19-yard line where it is down with five seconds to go. 47 yards on the kick. So time for one more play. And already in the background, you can hear the chant of Lou. A bittersweet moment for Lou Holtz. This, of course, being his last home game as head coach of Notre Dame. And I think you could tell from the interview with Bob Costas earlier today and, 
and whatnot. This is not the last time Luke Holtz will be leading a football team on a football field, but it is the last time he'll be leading this football team at Notre Dame on this turf. Jackie Crooks. And that is it. Victory number 100 for Lou Holtz in his final home game as head coach of the Fighting Irish. Let me down and let me go talk. Let's go down to John Dockery. John, not yet. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. We're not quite ready. The Notre Dame band is out of the field, including all of their seniors. Jeff Catalina is their president, and he will graduate next May with a BS in physics and an MBA. So it's seniors all around. Let's go down to John Dockery. Doc. Coach, 11 years, 100 wins. Can you share your thoughts and feelings with us after your last home game? Gratitude, gratefulness, fortunate. Uh, so many great memories. Uh, just been a wonderful experience for me, and I'm grateful for the people that enabled it to happen. Wonderful memories. What do you remember most about the 11 years? If it wasn't for players, you wouldn't need coaches, you wouldn't need the stadium, you wouldn't need managers, trainers. Players is all that matters. What will you miss most? Players, players, fans, but particularly students. Students are really tremendous here, and they've been so good to me. They've supported me, and maybe it's because I couldn't get into school here. They feel far more intelligent than I am. Whatever it is, I love them. I know you're going to talk to the students in a moment, but you know there are millions of fans out there. What would you like to say to all those fans across America? Well, to the young people, believe your dream, follow it, pursue it. To the other people, I just hope that uh, God blesses you as much as he has me. It's been a wonderful experience. And don't look at the bad. Focus on the negative in life. What's over is over. What's in the future is what's important. What's next for Lou Holtz? I have no idea other than going over and talk to the student body. No idea. Good luck and congratulations, Coach. Thank you. And remember those words of Lou Holtz. Believe your dreams and follow it and pursue it. That is very, very good advice. And we're going to stay with him right here as he goes to address the student body. And interesting his comment of the students because he couldn't get in here. Well, he'll be surrounded by his players oh, too yeah. as he addresses the student body, Charlie. One for you, we wouldn't need an administration. One for you, we wouldn't need this stadium. This university functions because of you. The sole purpose for you. They, God has blessed me in so many ways. To be here at Notre Dame has been very, very special, and to have three children graduate from Notre Dame means so much to my wife and I. I know they're in that student body, and I know what this university has done for my children, and I feel blessed. You'll find that we can build a better stadium, and it will be next year. You'll find we can put a better field playing surface than we have now. You can probably find a better social life <laughs> You'll find better coaches. You'll find better food. Uh, but you will not find anything, no school, that you can improve on its morals, its purpose, and its belief. And that's why I've been blessed to be here. 
God has been good to me. And I say this to you. You are Notre Dame. Where were you going? You're a golden donor. We're going to have a new coach. We're going to have a great team. I will be with you. I can only say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much you meant to me, how you supported me, how you lifted me up. When I was down, when I was depressed, I'd walk across the campus. I'd be going to church and somebody would say, hi, coach. And I just feel like a million dollars. I mean that to the band, to the cheerleaders, to other people, but to the Notre Dame family. I can't say anything except I've been blessed. Thank you, and God bless you. And so we come to the end of the career of Lou Holtz here at Notre Dame. This wraps up his final home game. They have one game left next week on the West Coast, and then the possibility, of course, of playing in a bowl. But he walks out off of the field for the last time in this stadium, the last time that we will see it in this configuration. And he walks away after winning his 100th game as the head coach here at Notre Dame. And when Lou Holtz came here some 11 years ago, he was taking over a program that needed a lot of work. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame had been down. And recently, of course, with Ron Wallace, Audrey Denson, the seniors all gathering for Plevich, and so many others that have added to the legends of